to the Rag Company Q&A Thursdays. That's right. I'm Dane Hennon. I'm your host, along with Levi Gates. Oh, hey, guys. It's Thursday. And to his left, Anthony Fisher. Hey, hey. And left of him, Keith Duplessis. Welcome, guest. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I, I watch, but I never get to come, so this is <laughs> hey, exciting. We appreciate yeah. that. Well, uh, we got a lot of comments flowing well, in. So one this of is the things I wanted one. to let everybody know is uh, we do have a bunch of the PNS team here. Yes. So uh, Keith is going to be with us for the next 30 minutes, and then we'll have a two-minute break, and we're going to swap out Keith for, uh, I think, Kyle Clark is going to be the next one. I think so, yeah. And mm-hmm. then a two, he'll be here for 30 minutes, a two-minute break, and then Sydney. And uh, so Sydney Gwynn of Viwash Auto Detailing. And then we're going to, again, 30 minutes and a two-minute break. And then Chris Woolman yes. so, uh, of Octane Detailing. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. We're going to have the whole crew here, but we want to try and get everybody on. But, again, this room's not that big, and uh, yeah. it's hot out in the other warehouse. So It is, yeah. But yeah. It is hot out there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep it clean. We'll keep it simple. And uh, why don't I just start throwing let's some questions this. up okay, on the screen? Let's, do it. let's use this fancy what new system. Got? All right. First up, we've got Dan Pfeiffer. Why don't you go ahead? And oh, good one afternoon. And word <laughs> up from Minneapolis. What is everyone's favorite PNS product that is not bead maker and why? Well, mm, that's, a good <laughs> uh, that's a good one, man. Uh, so I love bead maker, but um, probably my second favorite for uh just all around use is pearl Mm. yeah pearl soap Mm. is one of my like i so i don't do a lot of soap washing at home but i've started to just because i like using my foam cannon yeah and i've been playing with a bunch of different soaps and i bought a gallon of pearl a couple weeks ago and i instantly was like why have i been messing around with all these other soaps the last four months when i could have just used pearl (laughs) <laughs> it, it just everything worked it was perfect great yeah. product i yeah. mean and a lot of versatility there and i know yeah. maybe this might come up later in in the world of the rag company so i'll just tease that out <laughs> okay There's lots right. of opportunity yeah. though love pearl pearl's a, a long-standing product for us and, and and we do love it um but my favorite still is break buster oh. uh, so see that that's mine if i can yeah. get a tire to bleed that's that's, that's just true. the win right i mean you hit yeah. that tire and boom, all that dirt just starts bleeding down. You're like, yes, you know. There's nothing quite like that. So yeah. Instant gratification, yep. uh, great safe wheel cleaner. Mm-hmm. So that that's my favorite product. Um, and I will will say gladly that I was the guy who put the flag out there and and planted it in mm-hmm. uh, double black with Rennie and said, <laughs> let's do this. And and fortunately, everybody was receptive. So we, yeah. we thank you for that. Too. Yes. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Anthony. Yep. Yep. Um, I would say so. It would probably be Brake Buster, but a very, yes. very close second to that would probably be Express Interior Cleaner. Um, yeah, like I, li- like warmer. the smell, like the like the the froth, yeah. like the buildup that it has, um, and it just it's just one thing that I can use on everything. So if I'm reaching for something inside my garage just to clean something really quick, I just grab Express and, and, and clean up the interior. That's nice. true. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Dane? No, that sounds about right. Like I said, mine is probably Brake Buster along with him. I get a I lot of brake dust on the Jag, so watching it just melt away is a really satisfying yeah. experience. It's a high-performance yeah. uh, high yeah. uh, machine there, Dane, so yeah. obviously so, uh, a high-performance uh, wheel Yeah, cleaner. you got yeah. some crud you want to get rid of. It's awesome, so yeah. I really, really like it. The other one is uh, a newer product, definitely like uh, what Sid did on the windows of the Jag when she detailed oh. it. That was clarity something. Cream. That was yeah, yeah. That was impressive oh, stuff. So very nice. I'm sold on that. Okay. Just yeah. Watching how it transformed that was awesome. Well, if you got water spots in your market on your windows, I mean, there's there's really nothing easier to use than that. You know that yeah. product. Yeah. So um, no, it's a fantastic product. We love it. Uh, works great with our TrueView glass cleaner. So uh, excited to see that kind of really hit the market and, and energize yeah. the glass part of the business, which yeah. is not sexy by anybody's means. But well, not yet, right? But it's I the mean, first thing you look at when you get in the car because you go, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, right it's true. <laughs> yeah, glass cleaners are underrated. All right, all right. Next, next one up on the queue, we've got Dino. Dino. Dino, hey guys, keep up the great job. What do you think of Jeskar Power Lock plus polymer sealant? And can I use Beeb Maker on top of it, or should I top it with a wax? So, Who wants to take this? Uh, I haven't used Jeskar Power Lock plus polymer sealant in a long, long time. Uh, I will say, though, you can use it, and well, you can put Beeb Maker on top of it 
and you could top it with a wax if you like. Realistically, it's gonna they're both gonna work perfectly on top of that. Um, the real question is just what are how are you cleaning it? If you're gonna be using bead maker as well as a dry, uh, as a drying aid on that, then I would recommend using bead maker just because yeah. uh, bead maker lends itself to itself very well. So meaning that if you already have bead maker on the surface and you're reintroducing it as a drying aid, it's gonna be uh, that much easier to work with. Where yeah. Um, if you use a wax and then you're going to put bead maker as your drying aid or something else, you're going to get a little different uh, action, so to speak, Correct, especially yeah. your water behavior is going to be different. Well, it depends know. what you're trying to achieve now. Right. You know, I, I look at the anything that's got a polymer sealant in it, it, it's protection already. So the extra pop, the extra shine, if you're looking for some depth of shine that's not really real permanent, hey, wax is great. You know, yep. there's lots of great waxes out there. If you're looking for something that's got a really super slickness to it and kind of gives you that that feel that bead maker does, then go with bead maker. You yeah. know? But if you're just looking, hey, do I need to add more protection to the protection? Well, hey, I'm a chemical guy. Too much is never <laughs> enough. But um, you know, it really depends what you're after. Um, yeah. you know, the product itself has has protectant in it. So yeah. you know, what are you chasing? And if we knew what you were chasing, we'd probably be able yeah, to give you a better you answer. Yeah, right on. Well, uh, of course, we have Hans Closen. I'll throw him up on the screen. All the way short, from the Netherlands. Saying, nice. hey, hey, guess who's here? Hans is here. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Dan Pfeiffer saying, yo, Hans, followed by Mike Spina here saying, what up, TRC and PNS gang? Mike, what's what happening? Up, Mike? But Mike follows it up with another question. I really, really want to try Rupes Uno, but the wool pad is very intimidating for me, a beginner polisher. If I go down that hole, how many should I get to do a full car? Thanks, guys. Uh, Mike, I'm going to tell you, you're probably only going to need two. That's it. Two yellows yeah. or two blues. It depends on how aggressive you want to go. Um, that's really the biggest thing about it. Uh, if you want to just use Uno, your car's in good shape, you're using, a, you know, you maybe got a short throw polisher or something, um, the yellow wool is going to be just fine. The Rupes yellow wool yeah. is a really nice, nice pad. And it's actually built for Uno. That's the real reason yeah. for those two pads. Sure. That, well, that pad and that, yeah. that product. Well, and like you said, it depends on what hole you want to go down because the foam pad also works really, really mm -hmm. well uh, as well. So um, between the foam, try what works best for you. Check out the Maybe two different one of results. Each. Yes, get one of you each. You can get around a car with one. And then pad. if you really want to, you can go crazy and you can do one pass with the wool, check it out and be like, "Well, I want to see if I can finish this out a little bit nicer." Go one pass with the foam. Yeah, you can do that with Uno. Yeah. All right. Follow it up. We got Rectangle here saying, "Hey, hey guys, a question for PNS. How would you recommend on applying the fabric coating protection?" Keith. Well, hmm. that's, you know, it's really not overly difficult. So first thing, clean the carpet, right? Have it nice and clean. Uh, do your normal cleaning process. That product will actually go over a damp carpet, although we really recommend having dry carpet. So you get a better um, bond. You really will. So we like to work the product by getting a light mist over the surface of either the carpet or the fabric seat, either one you got. Uh, and we try to work it in either with a brush or, as Rennie is want to do, um, use that hand that's gloved and work it, you know, cross hatch it essentially mm -hmm. uh, back and forth, cover the whole area, and then cross hatch it the other direction. If you feel like you've worked it in pretty well um, and you've done that with your cross hatch, then do a light mist over the top so we get the base layer and the top layer of fibers. Yeah. Um, it's not a lot of product, but a good even distribution is really key to that. Yeah, and that stuff sprays, like the distribution, is it, it goes on very well. Yeah, a pint of that goes quite a ways. I yeah. mean, you're going to get more than more than a couple of cars out of that. Um, now, look, man, if you got a boat in a Suburban, you, you may not get a couple of cars out of it, but sure. you're going to get a, a good... A uh, long way with that product. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, we got Mike Spina following up here saying, there it is. Honestly, PNS products are one of the top, in my opinion. Great products that work, that don't break the bank, and have great smells and labels. Love all your products. Awesome. Well, thank you. We really <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, Dave would be happy to hear that uh, if we knew where Dave was today. <laughs> <laughs> Dave was on a little bit of a break, uh, but uh, he's been busy in the lab for the first half of the year and, and busting his hump, and so uh, he's off, but I will pass along your sentiments. Thank there you. Go. Excellent. Well, I wanted to include this one, even though it's short, because it's John Hole, it's John our Hole, friend from the UK. Shiny UK yes. saying, hey. hey, guys, what's up, John? Then we've got Travis... Saying hello from sunny Alaska, followed by hello, Richard Wakefield here. What's up, dude? Hey, guys, can you talk about PNS's Iron Buster? Mm. Tell us what makes it so good. 
Perhaps we can compare it to similar products like IronX and Ferex. Would love to do that, Richard. Uh, the three of us have not used it, so yeah. we can't provide a comment on it. So, Keith, <laughs> tell us, wow, Keith. Wow, take the daggers out. <laughs> no, we're, we're twisting them, baby. Let's like do Keith, it. I really want to know. <laughs> you know, we're really lucky with that product. Um, it came out, and it flew right off the shelves. So, so fast, um, we, as a primary <laughs> distributor, couldn't even get a hold of it. You know, <laughs> that's how fast it went. Um, sometimes you're... Sold You're out. Lucky that you have a great yeah. following and great customers and people who like your product. So, thank you to, to, to all of you out there who bought the product. Um, and the f- smell on it isn't quite as offensive as some of the other products. I won't name any names. I don't think that's fair. Um, <laughs> but we all know, in general, an iron, oh, an yeah. iron yeah. remover like is going to smell. Yeah, it's going to going to have that kind of sulfuric rot, rotten egg type smell to it. Uh, this one again isn't as bad. We've kind of toned that down a little bit. Um, that's kind of a tenant for us. We don't want to really have strong smells in our product. Um, works just like any other product you would expect. It hits that iron. It immediately starts to change color and bleed because it does have a, re- a chemical reaction that causes a color change to the product. Uh, great product for, you know, rail dust removing, uh, fallout removing, brake dust removing. Um, just a great product on the high pH side of the house, so you're not using an acid fallout remover. Uh, if that's something you're mm-hmm. not used to. But, um, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, I've used it just a little bit because it's like, okay, you got to play with it enough, but we got to sell that to somebody. So off it went. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, again, it, it's a product that we really think has hit a market um, that we were, you know, trying to get into for a while. Yeah. But people have asked me, why haven't you done it sooner? Mm-hmm. And, and the simple answer is because we wanted to do it right. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it takes a while to develop those products. Again, odor was a big deal for us. And we really wanted to get a product that wasn't that mellow. Well, what people don't is. understand is when you're mixing and making that batch, mm-hmm. that is going to make the entire building of PNS smell while they're yeah. making that batch. Oh, but easy. not only that, but then once it's bottled and it's added into a container or into a box, those boxes and, and bottles still have a scent yeah. that, that wafts out <laughs> because it's an iron remover. It's just, it doesn't matter whose brand iron remover. It's an iron remover. And we used to have this when we had, uh, you know, with Optimum's Ferex. Mm-hmm. You'd have, we'd have, you know, 30 gallons in boxes sitting there. You'd walk by that in the warehouse and you go, whoa, it, it'd yep. wake yeah, you up right. in the morning. You don't need the lights on to find that product. Right. Nope. You know, that's really <laughs> the truth of it. The other part that goes with that, you know, making those products is they do require special mix tanks. So yeah. you mm-hmm. can't just mix things in, in, in and the in chemistry it. of it would tell us that we can't use it in a metal tank. Yeah. Right? So we've got to have poly for everything. And so yeah. that, that requires equipment, um, upgrades, management, and, and, you know, allocation. And uh, again, all part of doing it the right way um, gotcha. to make sure mm-hmm. that you, you produce a product yeah. that comes out and does what it's supposed to do when you get it. There so, you go. Cool. Anthony. Hey guys. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in on this next one here. One stain gets it loaded. There you go. Um, it says, what do you do with stains and seats that resurface after they dry? Ooh, wicking. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's called capillary action. And uh, <laughs> um, Oh, I don't know if that's what it's called. Capybara it action? So I, it's no. a capillary <laughs> action that it causes Canberry. the stain to wick up. So yeah. what you've got is a layer of fabric, and then you have a layer of foam underneath. Yeah. Let's say you spill this mug full of uh miami cola yeah into it delicious yeah uh delightful wonderful and you don't catch it in time yeah it makes its way through the fabric down into the foam and sits settles in that foam right then you get it wet again when you go to shampoo it yeah you're using an extractor as you're spraying and extracting i.e vacuuming it back up you're trying to pull all that fabric back up onto that thing yeah and Mm -hmm. what's happening is He's telling me to stay on my mic. I told you guys I'm the most dynamic member of this podcast. <laughs> I'm so, working. I'll train him eventually, guys. So, Hold on. The point is, so that foam, you're sucking that product back up, and it's not getting all of it. Yeah. Because you got, you know, maybe six inches of foam that you've got to try and pull correct pull yeah. liquid through. So what happens is you then get as much as you can. Yeah. But due to capillary action, those stains will just wick up. Or worst Let's case see. scenario. You go sit back down on that seat <laughs> after you've just yeah, cleaned yeah. it, and you're like, man, this looks great. When you sit on it to maybe do the window, you get up, and it's brown again because yeah, yeah. of all the coffee or soda or whatever's in there. 
and now you have to get all that back out. So yeah. my method was always to take a, towel, a damp towel yeah. and set it on the surface of that fabric, and I'd usually, sounds weird, but I would slap. Yeah, spank it. I would spank it. So <laughs> with those arbulary stains, right? Capillary. Capillary. No, arbulary is what you Not said. Not the word I use. Batteries. No. So, so <laughs> arbulary so, batteries. Okay. So you're taking a damp towel. You're kind of giving a little love tap, right? Just kind of let, let, let it know that you're there, right? Now, sometimes, are yeah. you applying little ta- little just tap. a little just tap, right? Just say hello. Let's um, know so, who's the boss. Yeah. So are you pressing hard on this or are you literally just patting I'm it? I'm just patting it. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be too, too rough. Yeah. But what I want is enough transfer for liquid between the two surfaces. Gotcha. And then I just set that towel on there. Now, most of the time as it dries, that will wick up a lot of it. Or Correct. what it'll do is it'll allow the uh the what's left of that liquid to fall back down farther down into the foam as it dries so that it doesn't come back up so what towel do you do this with well it depends on what it is but normally 245s 245 edgeless yeah oh. perfect towel. <laughs> now a couple other things i don't use the water that way so i don't create this problem yeah okay. um, so there's a couple ways you can attack this steam is one and steam is a great thing, but you want to use a dry steam, not a wet steam, because, again, wet steam is going to drive that. It's going to bring it back it's up. It's basically yeah. going to saturate that product and, and drive it down. The other thing is you want to use a stain remover that's got an enzyme base to it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I think Terminator, I know anybody? Something yeah. like Terminator. Um, <laughs> and that product is going to chemically, materially change that pro- the, the contaminant. Gotcha. And it will probably change its color. So even if there is a minor remnant left, you're going to have changed it so that it's not noticeable. Yeah. But a dry clean method where you use a light amount of material, um, dry surface scrub it, and either steam extract it or dry towel extract it. Yep. And you can do that with either a brush wrapped, you know, with a towel. You can do that with a, just a knuckling out of towel. Or my favorite, taking a free spin DA with a brush on it, wrapping the towel around the head of that sucker and scrubbing it that way. Oh. And you'll dry extract mm. the stain out of the carpet or the fabric without really introducing that water that dries the stain down, yeah. and then we don't have to deal with the wicking or the capillary action mm-hmm. coming yeah. back. Yeah, okay. no, Randy was saying that he's a big fan of, of dry extraction. You know, it's lately. huge. I, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's the smartest way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but there are those stains that yeah. are just, or there's that amount of dirt that's so much saturation. You have to extract. And so the other part of that is, guys, if you have that, plan to do it twice yeah you know that yeah that's the other part if it's super bad you may have to go back twice and that's just the and that's reality what I, and that's kind of how yeah. i set it up if i saw that that was my thing yeah. was like look we're gonna do this once to get a lot of it out and then we'll go back and do a dry style yep cleaning yeah. for the second version just to make to limit the amount of liquid that but i do like that towel method where if you got the the surface wet and the towel slightly damp that material may wick right past the the fabric on the yep. seat and go into straight the into the towel yep. and that's another good way to do that yeah. yeah. Excellent. Wetter is not better. I'm sending up Hans Closen here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. So Hans Closen says, oh, snaps. World Police Chief is here. Good thing G. Davis is not around. That's in response to John Hole for you guys uh, <laughs> yeah. wondering who the Swirl Police Chief is. Okay. Yeah. It's John Hole. Uh, it's my first time here. I, don't don't know. It's okay. We've got back, some regulars. I don't think he was a real chief. <laughs> uh, well, the, well, he was the chief of the Swirl Police. <laughs> yeah, now, I know, but they weren't real police. <laughs> Hans Speaking of regulars, we have, look like real police. <laughs> we have Tonezors here police. with oh, a that comment. Rest was kind of questionable. <laughs> Looking out for Tonezors. <laughs> Let's wish Tonezors well here. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up from <laughs> home self isolation due to COVID exposure at work? Oh, Come nice. On. Tell the guy. You got hey, some man. COVID hey. exposure at work. Awesome. You are Kick doing back. the right thing by, by not coming in and, and not bringing it around to everybody. Bring it around. Keep, Keep our masks on. Good for uh, you. And you don't even have to work. You can <laughs> yeah. just, you know, they say work yeah. from home. I, you know, kick your feet up. Is that well. what you did when we were home? <laughs> no. Okay. What do you think I am a monster? It's moving I along. Heard otherwise, but that, you know. Here we knows? go. Tom Kirby says, "Afternoon. I did not <laughs> realize the new blue bead maker was a limited run. Mm. Thought it was going to be an exclusive product to TRC. Oh well." Tom Kirby, when we say limited, have we ever meant not limited? We, we actually but you know, meant it. It is kind of true. It is a TRC only product. It is, a TRC and it is only. limited. Both. Turns out both things are both true. Both things are true. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that you mm-hmm. can get it from was us at the rag company. And uh, here's the deal. So we still do have some blue bead maker in stock, like five gallons. But here's the deal. Um, We're going to be releasing it randomly mm. through various locales, mm. so it behooves you. To mm. follow us on Instagram, Big words. follow mm. us on Facebook, subscribe 
to the Rag Company podcast. That's right. Listen weekly to the Rag Company podcast and participate in the weekly Q&A. And it does smell yummy, by the way. It does. It, it does. does. So, Kirby, if you want to if you want to get in on it, you got to make sure you're doing all those things, which I know you are. Yeah. But that's the next way to find out. That's the only way we're going to be uh, dropping it, so to speak. Either that or just buy uh, buy some from Luke Berge on eBay. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> That guy. Wow. Luke Berge probably bought 100 <laughs> gallons of it. <laughs> 200 dollars a gallon, Luke? What the heck is this? This is the Luke Black Market. The Blue Bead Maker Black the Market. The, <laughs> the, the Blue the Luke Bead Maker. Luke Bead Maker. Luke Bead. <laughs> okay, that's enough uh, of that. We got Chris okay. McCallum over here. Hey, my gallon just arrived a few hours ago. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Right. Oh, enjoy it. <laughs> Worth some money. Save it. Followed by Travis here. How long can I reasonably expect a bottle of ceramic coating to stay usable after I open it? I'm going to say 30 days just as a blanket statement for all coatings after you've cracked it open. Some of them are a week. Some of them can be two weeks. Some of them, honestly, I've, I've, I've stretched my limits with some, uh, with some gloss coat for sure. Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. too. The key I've is got product air. that's over a year old. And again, keep it cool. Keep it in a dark place. Reseal that lid on there tight. Again, every product's different. Every manufacturer's different. Exactly. Uh, yeah. my, I think I would say err on the 30 to 60 days is kind of your longevity lifetime yep. uh, to use it up and really know that it's going to be maximally effective. Yeah. yeah. And I've had it where like I've opened it up and like the dropper has started to crystallize. So the dropper is no good, right? but I still have product in the bottle mm -hmm. that I can pour out. Or I've had it to where it's crystallized around the tips that do have the dropper in the cap. And so you pop the cap and then you can still use product. Yeah. So nice. the point is just getting past the crystallization. Yeah. So. Sure. All right. Next up, we got Ricky Cologne here. Oh, Ricky, what's up, homie? Okay. So inquiring minds want to know, when is that nifty new IK sprayer going to be available at TRC? So we'd like Spoiler to thank our alert. friends at IK for uh, spoiling it um, <laughs> in a good way. You in a may good have way. caught it so, used in like one or two of our videos so mind you, recently. That IK sprayer that you're seeing is IK sprayers in Europe. Yes, those are available right now. We are currently working on our order to have them here in the U.S. Now, Anthony and I do have a very limited number of them for ourselves to play with and test and do stuff and make some pictures and videos and stuff of. So you have possibly seen the uh, IK in the background of some of our videos and things like that. Now, we are working on a timeline. We do not have a timeline yet. Yeah. So we were a little surprised when we saw that picture the other day because we don't have a timeline yet as to when we will get them. So uh, we are working on it. Again, you need to stay tuned to our videos and our podcasts and all that because that's where we'll be announcing it. So. Yeah. Ruth. All right. Plugging along here, we've got Scott saying, excited to get my delivery today from the sale last weekend. Nice. 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 Yeah, Glad you. you got that. Thank you. Then we've got Hans here. You guys just go ahead and read them. I'm just going to throw them up there. And you Travis guys Moes, brand six months to a year after opening if stored correctly. All right. That'll work, yeah. Hans. You can say that. So Yeah. Take it. CJ Byrne, hey, can you guys give a little breakdown of Soul and the new window polish and coating? All right. Well, the breakdown on Soul is it is a great kind of entry level coating. So if you're a mobile detailer uh, or if you are a kind of an extreme hobbyist or prosumer, we call mm -hmm. you guys those, um, this is a great product for you because it, it really does go on easy. Um, one of the things we do recommend is you're going to load the pad up a little bit more on that initial pass than you normally would. Uh, but great product, uh, single application, gives you a year of durability. Um, you can really almost do half a hood panel that size with the with a pass. So again, more flexibility, a little more working time. Fantastic product, really easy to use, and uh, we've seen it do well on bare metal as well. So we're going to play with that a little bit. So don't go crazy with that, but we have some testing in the works yeah. to, to kind of see how far we can go with that. On the window coating, um, we're going to tell you this is a six month to a year prod, um, product. If you're in Oregon, you probably are going to use your wipers more, so you're going to wear it off faster. Uh, you get into other parts of the country, it's probably going to give you a full year. Yeah. Uh, we really recommend polishing that glass. Cause, yeah. Mm -hmm. So using like clarity you know, cream. Oh, yeah. yeah. Use some clarity cream on it. Uh, clean it well. You're still going to, you know, prep it like you would prep a regular coating. So yeah. coating prep on both the paint for sole and on the window for the window coating. Um, fantastic product. Sydney's going to be here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So hit her back up on her experiences with it. She probably has more windshields coated than anybody else we've, we've got right now. Um, 
nice product in that it'll give you probably between four and ten cars, depending on how you use it. Um, mm-hmm. I like to tell everybody, if it were me in my shop, I would coat the windshield, and then every SUV, the back window gets it. Because oh. the back window is really the worst. Yeah. I mean, oh, it is. It gets all the grime, all the junk, all the goo. Um, and it's got that wiper back there. And all yeah. that thing does is just wreck the back window. Um, yeah. So we find that that's the best place to have a coating beyond the front windshield. I'm not so sure that I would coat the side windows, but I would absolutely do the front windshield and on an SUV, the back window. Yeah, that's okay. a great idea. A lot of people seem to not remember that part. All right. Who else we got here? Then we got Richard, Richard Wakefield. Also, I'm going to get to experiment with Uno Protect and combining it with other other products this weekend. Really like Uno so far. Thanks, Richard. Well, cool. Let us know how that goes. And, hey, shoot a quick video and throw it up on, on yeah. the gram and let us see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. All and right. Travis. My sale box from Travis is due tomorrow. UPS Ground taking the long way around. Well, that's kind of normal with what's so, going on. For those who don't know, with COVID, if you haven't noticed it, you're going to add about 20% to any shipping to time. So yeah. um, don't be mad at them. All y'all are at home ordering stuff on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. So yeah. we buried, buried the freight company. Well, so it's like Christmas, Christmas time. time. It's, it's like Christmas time for them now. Worse. because like, yeah. Except it's months and yeah. months on end. Yeah. It's Christmas like, in July. What do yeah, you want? yeah, that's literally what it is. <laughs> there we go. All right. Danny Israel. Hey, everyone. I'm a big fan of Pearl Beadmaker and Terminator and use them quite often. Is it okay to use Terminator on leather? Thanks. Uh, you could, but why do you need to use it on leather? It is an enzymatic cleaner. Do you have milk? Do you have protein? Do you have, what do you have going on there? So, um, I'd probably stay away from it. I would probably just use express on it. I think express is your way to go. Unless you've got, the only reason I might use it on leather is if I've got the stitching and I want to get some stain marks out of that stitching. Yep. Um, But really, it's probably not going to be as effective as using the Express Interior, which is a product that was designed to be used on both the, really primarily on the coated leather. There you go. And the vinyls and the plastics. Uh, If you're talking King Ranch leather, we got a whole other conversation to have about (laughs) how we clean that. Exactly. All right. So. We are going to be going into a little two-minute break, guys. So, Keith, thank you for coming in. Thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, next, we're going to bring in Kyle Clark, I believe, to come hang out with us. So Let me uh, get ready to go out into the great wide world. There you go. (laughs) We're going to get ready to go on to this next one. So, Travis, we are going to answer your question. Coming up. Stay tuned. Yep. Wow. Hey guys, Levi for The Rag Company, and I wanted to direct you over to our FAQ channel. Now, our FAQ channel is our way of answering all those questions you had as quickly and efficiently as possible. The FAQ channel is very simple. From whether you're just starting out detailing, you need to learn how to wash a car, or maybe you have a question on what a rinseless wash is, or something as simple as how do I wash my microfiber towels, you'll be able to find it at The Rag Company FAQ channel. If you're watching this video, you're probably wondering how long can you store Optimum No Rinse inside of a bucket for? The difference between an open cell and a closed cell foam pad. Should I wash my microfiber towels after using a spray sealant? So we're going to be answering that question and more in today's FAQ video. Well, there you have it. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the FAQ channel. And if you're looking for it, go to YouTube and type in The Rag Company FAQ and make sure you subscribe so that you'll be aware of whenever a new video comes out. Now, if you didn't see your question answered, feel free to send us an email or leave a comment right there on a video and we will be sure to add that to our next video. So hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, can't wait to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. To Q&A Thursday, I'm Dane Hennon. To my left, Levi Gates. What's up? And to his left, Anthony Fisher. Hey. And new on the panel here, we've got <laughs> Sydney from Eyewash Auto Detailing. Say hi, Sydney. Hi, guys. You're not <laughs> Kyle. 
<laughs> You're no, not I'm Kyle. Not, I'm not Kyle. <laughs> Perfect. So we thought uh, Kyle was coming in next, but yeah. Sydney was on the list. So the name's right on next, the panel. So there you That's go. All that matters. Now, yeah, <laughs> now you know. So you guys can check out Sydney at Eyewash Auto Detailing on Instagram. <laughs> you can find her on Facebook. And Sydney is a brand ambassador for PNS products. Yes. She also happens to live here in Boise, Idaho. So convenient. Very, 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 very easy. Nice. Very nice. So awesome. uh, let's get started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm going to yeah. start where we left off with okay. Travis here saying, Hanzo. What is stored correctly? Cap tight, cool temps, no direct sun. Exactly. Yes. Yes. All right. Followed by. Yeah, they were cool waiting dark for that. Place. Like yeah. to store your bodies. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep. Or, Mike Spina, okay. I use Express on leather. He says. Yeah, you can. That's yeah. a perfect, mm-hmm. perfect place for it. Okay, so. and then we got people kind of agreeing in the comments. I'm going to go mm-hmm. to the next bigger comment here. Let's go with this one. We've got right. CJ. Yeah, he says, uh, hey, can you guys do a little breakdown on soul coating and the new window polish and window coating? Uh, Can you do a breakdown for us there, Sid? Sure. Um, So the new soul coating is a one-year coating, a standalone coating, or a topper for inspiration. Um, It is a super user-friendly application. Um, I've used it on probably, gosh, probably 20 to 30 cars now. I absolutely love it. It is a huge game changer. Um, Really, really love that coating. Um, the window polish is very near and dear to my heart, um, Clarity Cream. I've been using that for um, almost a year now. Yeah, well, you were helping love with it. the development of it. Yes, yeah. and I love it. Um, it, again, is a game changer as far as glass polishing. Um, a lot of the glass polishers, polishes that are out there are very dusty. They kind of create that issue with rolling the window down. It can scratch after the fact. So it's a product that stays wet and um, it just does a really great job at making the windows really dark and crisp and getting all that kind of yeah. fine water spotting off, and it just makes them look amazing. It's like turning up the contrast. Yeah. 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 Well, and what I liked about Clarity Cream was I used it on the Suburban because I mm-hmm. had, um, well, we test a lot of products. I had a sealant on there that, uh, let's just say, turned to tree sap, basically, yes. all over the glass, and I was yeah. using other compounds and polishes to try to remove it and mm-hmm. i couldn't get it to come off yeah and so using the the clarity cream it was able mm-hmm. to actually fully remove that stuff without damaging the vinyl on the glass which right was a big right. deal for me yeah so and it makes really them impressed. super soft and smooth but then also going into that so not only does it make all of the windows look amazing um it's also the prep for the new glass coating which is called view um, and that is a fantastic coating. Um, it really, in, di- in different environments, it's really hard to get glass coatings to hold up. And right. here we have a lot of sand and stuff in our air and um, snow up. melt and stuff. And so it's really held up really well to that. Um, and I think my favorite thing is when you have it on the windshield, and Dane, you can attest to this, yeah. is you just see better. Like you it do. really yeah. does make the windshield really crisp. It, it helps the starring at night. So it helps mm-hmm. night vision. Um, it's going to help with water repelling um, and then just sand and stuff hitting the windshield. It just kind of gives it that extra layer of defense like any other ceramic coating does. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's performed very well. I am super happy with yeah. it. That, that um, was the biggest thing I noticed was at night when you're driving. Yeah. Normally on a windshield, you get that. Yeah. That starring, starring yeah. and stuff. It got rid of a lot of that. Yeah. So yeah. it was like changing a polarizer. Yep. Or something. So when you use the clarity cream and the, and the view glass coating, it's, I mean, it literally changes your whole world. Yeah. Right. Love it. No, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. I'm going to throw this next one up Kay. on the screen for you guys. What sort of towels do you guys recommend for the application of Beadmaker from Alex Dyke? Alex FTWs. Honestly, that's like our favorite mm-hmm. towel for that. Uh, we even made one in orange specifically for that. Mm-hmm. And hey, we got a blue FTW. Mm-hmm. We do. For those of you that bought blue Beadmaker, you mm-hmm. guys can use those as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, that is... Uh, you know, that's that's our main go to for that. You can use any towel in the TRC lineup really to, to mm-hmm. install bead maker. Um, we just found that the FTW is the best application for that one. So <laughs> yeah. Next All right. up we've got Prestige. Nice. Good day everyone. It's cold AF in Australia this morning <laughs> enjoying a hot coffee. That's a bummer that it's that cold over there. Right yeah. now. Kinda yeah. jealous, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kinda miss the cold. Uh, the flannel weather. <laughs> Oh. Honestly, dude, I have a Anthony. I, I have closets winter, right? full have of flannel, of Dixon flannels. Dixon flannels. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. 
Katie's like, do you regret buying all those now? And I'm like, kind of, yes, <laughs> yeah. because I literally can't wear any of them. Yeah, I wore one yeah. of my Dixon bamboos yesterday. Did you really? Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. But in September, company. when you already have it all, you're going to love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. true. I'm going to love it's it. True. We Be had a prepared. cool day the other day, and Anthony and I both wore yeah. Dixon flannels the other <laughs> yeah. day to work. It was great. It was yeah. nice. All right, I'm yeah. throwing Ricky up on the screen uh, here. Ricky Colon from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. For PNS, I finally tried the paint gloss spray and shine as a drying aid. I loved it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ricky, there it's you go. awesome. Uh, paint gloss is kind of like a Swiss Army knife. It has a lot of different uses that um, don't get talked about a lot. Um, and that's one of them. It's a great drying aid. It's a great kind of final touch up. It's a great waterless wash. Um, I use it for tons of random little things that, yeah, um, yeah I, lo- I love paint gloss. There you go. <laughs> All right, Dane, next one. All right, sending it up. Got Travis here. Travis, weird I'm doing that. Had two bottles of CSL set up on me. Maybe it was six-ish months between coating. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome, Travis. That's in reference to uh, our topic earlier of how long can coatings (laughs) sit before, Mm, you Mm -hmm. know. Lose and them. we have regular G uh, Davis. The G the Davis horn. question for PNS: Did anyone smell the Anthony Cologne before involving <laughs> him in the development of Blue Bead Maker? Thank you. Love your products. <laughs> yes, actually, just about everybody did. I think that was what Bob said. He goes, "I know Anthony is uh, a cologner." Yeah, uh, a cologner. I, I don't know what the, <laughs> you're going to be a loner if you're wearing. I don't know it. what the sound is. Yeah, I don't know what the French word is. I'm a, is a for fragrance for enthusiast. A cologne like mixologist. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, Scent no. Well, it hasn't gone great so far. My <laughs> career in clones wasn't great, but I like to think that I I got I did okay on this first scenting of bead maker. Yeah, the I like maker. I yeah. like the the terms we've come up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, bomb uh, the bomb uh, pop? bottle bo- bomb pop or rocket, what, pop. rocket pop yeah. and uh, summer drink. Summer <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a summery drink. What, so what, what is the scent mean? of this? Right. It sounds drink. like a summery drink. But like yeah. everybody smells it, says, "Yep, I see that." Yep, I'm like, yep. perfect. And yet nobody <laughs> yeah. knows what that is until nope. they smell Doesn't it. Doesn't matter. Oh. We got Ooh. Chris here. I'm throwing him up on the screen. There you go. Guys. Good day, TRC crew. When using the PNS finisher peroxide, can I spray it and forget it, or should I let it dwell on the fabric and mop it up? Both, Chris. Mm-hmm. You can do both. That's the best part about finisher. So. If you need to wipe it down on something, you can just to help kind of, you know, in our previous talk about uh, stopping the capillary action or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Usually if you have a stain that is. (laughs) (laughs) So you might have a stain that wicks back up. You can use finisher and a towel and wipe it to lift some of that dirt, Mm -hmm. that final dirt up. And you can also just spray it to knock down and make sure everything stays put. Mm -hmm. Uh, kill scent, kill odor, all that kind of stuff. But not a bad idea to take a towel and just kind of check everywhere that you've sprayed it. Because if you get Mm -hmm. it on any of the plastics or vinyl, you want to wipe it off because it is a peroxide. So good idea to just take a towel and visually... Yeah, Check and it area. literally it's three percent peroxide. Yeah, so yeah. it it acts just like if you had hydrogen yeah. peroxide in your hand. Yeah, you want to make sure you yeah. didn't get any overspray on leather. Yeah. Or Wear some gloves. Like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, now going to the next question here. Riley S says carpet bomber bottle mentions that it can also be used on vinyl engines, wheel wells, and paint. Would I just use it like I would at a greaser in those situations? Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. So you can do that. And I'd recommend diluting it, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, go with a diluted version of that first uh, and mm-hmm. see what happens, right? And basically, I'd say you can start at 10 to 1, 5 to 1, somewhere around there, um, because it is pretty strong. And we've used it straight on a lot of uh, interior applications. But I think exterior, you know, go diluted. See what happens. Yeah. yeah there you go. Alejandro Bonilla. <laughs> Our uh, PNS friend in Costa Rica, saludos muchachos. What's hey, happening, hey. homie? I like that. <laughs> yeah, very nice of him to do. <laughs> All right. Then we've got Ken here. Had a different experience, but you know what? That's okay. That's Said Ricky, life. I did not find paint gloss to do anything really. Hmm. Well, that's the fun part about paint gloss. It, it acts more like a waterless wash mm-hmm. uh, as well as a clay lube, but yep. it provides yep. a lot of dirt repellency and... Mm-hmm. Um, encapsulation so you're mm-hmm. able to yeah. use it as a yeah. quick detailer showroom yeah. spray kind of kind yeah. of product well yeah, i'd say in general it, it focuses more i think pink loss is like unlike other a lot of other quick detailers right it does focus more on a little bit more cleaning ability than yep. it does um, more of the protection and all that that you would see from other quick detailers so mm-hmm. uh plant gloss is unique in its own way um, but what's nice is that it's very uh, it's very cost efficient, right? It is, and, yeah. and, and you can honestly, lay that stuff on, man, and it yep. works yeah. awesome as a clay lube. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's one nice. thing that a lot of people need to. 
think about. So. Yeah, and we get this question a lot where people say, can I, if, even if my car is like a little bit dusty or I've driven it once after I've washed it, can I go over it with bead maker? And I always tell them, no, use paint gloss first. Yep. Um, and so, and we do that at Monterey. We'll wipe down the cars with paint gloss and then immediately follow with bead maker. And, yeah. and you kind and of get the Air both Force of, one too. yeah, the best of both worlds in that. So, yeah. um, that's a really good, so yes, paint gloss is not leaving behind a lot of protection. So a great thing to do is to make sure you're getting the dirt safely off and then. Yep. Point blank. If it's safe to use on the cars at Monterey, it's safe to use yes. on any yep. car. Yep. How would you yep. describe the scent of paint gloss? Because it smells like cinnamony. Like it's very like, cinnamon. Oh, it's to me. like a spice. Like, yeah. 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 What do you think it yeah. is? I don't know probably, how to describe it. Yeah. Probably a little bit of it's like a, a little spice. Hmm. Like a yeah. like a like a not like a vanilla. Not like a spice latte. Mm -hmm. No. But like I don't it's know. It's got a cinnamony it's scent. Like, to what it. if it like chai? Yeah. It kind of yeah. Well, no, it Chai really tea. is. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's the yeah. Thing. Yeah. Like, like I think it's. I think it's good. Do yeah. I think it's my favorite scent in the world? I don't think it's mm -hmm. my favorite. But what's funny is Nate, right? Our photographer mm -hmm. knows next day Nate. Mm -hmm. Whenever I spray that in the air during a photo shoot, he goes, "Oh my god, it's so good." Mm -hmm. He's like, "That smell. That smell is amazing." He loves that smell. And I'm like, "You really like this smell?" He's like, "Oh, one of my favorites." I think it's like, one that grows on you too, though. I, and I'm like, "You're yeah. kind of a weirdo." And he's like, "I know." And but <laughs> I know. He, he looks good. like he works in a barber shop, so you know it, Dane, it fits right in. Dean, he's watching this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want Moving on here. to DBN, Dalamini. I think that's what it says. I am yeah. interested in buying bead maker. Just busy with South Africa custom, uh, and to check if it will allow for shipping. Uh, so, fun fact, mm. uh, DBN, uh, you can't buy uh, paint gloss from us because we do not yeah, ship bead makers. What he's saying. oh, but, but, yeah, bead yeah. maker because we do not ship chemicals overseas through yeah. our website. So, what you do need to do is maybe check out PNS sales.com and look up and see if there is a mm -hmm. supplier that handles South Africa and reach out to them. I know there, you could possibly maybe order it from Europe, uh, from one of those countries. So, uh, you might be able to get it a little easier into South Africa. So, all, all right. right, next up, Philip. Sell me on why I should try PNS odor elimination kit and how it should be used. Thanks. I don't know about the PNS odor you're elimination. About, you're talking about the, the what's it? It's like odor a, doc. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming. So there, there was an old, um, an older version called Auto Vaccine that PNS carried. Now mm -hmm. it's the um, odor doc, which um, is awesome. It's a lot more user friendly. Um, it works really, really well. It is very specific to the directions. So who is ever using it wants to make sure that you literally follow the directions. But the best thing I can say here is Rennie did a really great YouTube video on exactly how to use it. Oh, um, it is very, very specific. And so I don't want to say anything wrong on here. So definitely um, go just search Odor Doc, you know, PNS or Double Black on YouTube. And Rennie's video should come up and it. It's very detailed and he did a great job yeah. on that video. So, um, but it is a very effective product. Um, you can use it from anywhere from food smells all the way up to smoke. Um, so it's, yeah, and it's something that's easy enough to run every couple months. If somebody tends to have a stinky car, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm thinking like kids that play lacrosse and they're riding in your, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like from everyday odors, it's just a really good, rather than masking the smell, removing the smell. Right, because no. masking so, yeah. it, eventually you just right. wind up with like this weird weight in the air right. of just all the nastiness. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's a 90 degree really day good. and yeah. you go, yeah. what well, and happened? It's, and yeah. it's a great product uh, for um, detailers who are maybe don't have mm -hmm. a ozone machine right. or yep. have decided to buy something like that. Or maybe yeah. they don't do a lot of odor elimination, yep. but maybe they get one yep. or two a year. Yeah, and uh, it's a shorter duration treatment. So especially yeah. for people like me who that don't have an ozone um, with some of the other previous ones, like I would have to wait 12 hours before yeah, I could yeah. open the car. Right. And mm -hmm. so I think it's like two to three hours. It's not a very long, so it's, it's just a much more user-friendly system sure. that's go. very effective. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're getting inside a car Danny with an ozone machine here. going on it. Uh, definitely <laughs> not a good time. Not a good there time. There you go. You got Danny. All right, Danny Israel. Keith, given Anthony's designer cologne history, how nervous were you when he wanted to design a signature scent for TRC bead maker? <laughs> what would Keith say? <laughs> Keith? Uh, I don't think Keith has an olfactory. Yeah, uh, he yeah, may yeah, not. He, may, so. he may not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we did, we were laughing because uh, when we were talking previously, Bob was very excited and thought he had hit the nail on the head with a scent for Anthony that Anthony would love. And, and when Anthony got it, he was like, 
can you send me all your scents so that I can make <laughs> my like, own? Allow me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so Bob was a little disappointed and sad that I know. He didn't like I know. Shows. Well, when I, when when he found like I like cologne, he literally took that very literally. Uh, yeah, he did. Here's something that smells like cologne. Like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, this is it uh, did. nice, but um, that wasn't what you were looking. But it's for. not what I'm going for. And so when they sent all the different scents, you, you can ask them, dude. It was like a, I was, I'm sitting there like. Pouring concoctions, right? Mm -hmm. Like smoke, like a fire started for a good uh, couple. Yeah, that was weird. A little breezy. That was kind of weird. But basically, uh, we came to like a final scent. I will say though, if you're getting this for the first time and you go and put your nose into the gallon, it still smells good, right? It's strong. The smell will keep in mind this is a fresh Mm -hmm. batch, right? Some Mm -hmm. of the bead maker that some people are getting, right? It could be a month, two months old, depending Mm -hmm. on when the batch was created, right? So the scent will settle more, so it is strong. But it smells the best when it's atomized. So when it when you shoot it into right. the air, yeah. it smells very, very, yep. very, very yep. good. Um, but it is strong inside the bottle. So just give give a little bit to settle, right? Give a little shake and uh, <laughs> and just think of uh, me and Levi and Dane, <laughs> and oh, wow. Morgan, whenever you, we ever spray yeah, that thing. Think about that. All, All right, right. <laughs> bait addict, sup baits and crew. Levi Bates, because it sounds like <laughs> oh, Levi Bates. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, wow, is Levi that the new Drafo? I'm nope. just literally Drago. doing this in time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yes, Bait Addict, this is the new Drago, and it is here. However, it will not be available on the website until probably this weekend. Hmm. Yeah. I hear this weekend is a good time That's to be what, looking yeah. for Dragos. Jeff literally said this is a good weekend to look for Dragos. Mm-hmm. Is it really? That's all he said. He didn't well, give us a I date, see. but we thought we'd <laughs> tease it here first. You guys can uh, <laughs> check out the new Drago. It's pretty dope. This is a uh, this this looks like the old Drago, okay. but it is not. What we've got is a different type of coating suede on the yeah. uh, edging, as well as a better edge. And then the material is the new brushed terry. It so feels amazing. 365 mm-hmm. GSM that actually feels closer to about a 380, 390. Yeah. And then uh, it's got uh, 70 30 blend, uh, but it's a brushed terry weave. So. Uh, you Beautiful. guys can keep your eyes peeled for that. It is going to be hitting the website this weekend. So, uh, Mark Amar, great crew. Say hello to Keith for me and tell him we're turning the heat up in Phoenix. Bring your shorts. He'll be excited. He'll be very <laughs> yeah. excited. He loves hot weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a weird Something he's very <laughs> excited Beta about. Beta Addict follows up with, definitely not Drafo. That would be like the 9010 Fisher Price version of the Drago. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the Drago, Beta Addict. You guys have been waiting. All of you have been yes. waiting so long for it. We've been waiting so long for it. It's literally begun, been gone from the TRC lineup for almost two years. Almost years. two years. Yeah. Last year, when we were at uh, Detailer's Domain, I found one case of Dragos yeah. at Detailer's Domain, and I posted it on Instagram, mm-hmm. and people, he sold them out that weekend. We had discovered mm-hmm. today that Rennie keeps them in a safe. <laughs> Rennie keeps them in a safe. <laughs> he showed it to us He's on the meeting this morning. Them. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty impressive. He's like, I still have some. And Rennie had bought the last 25 <laughs> yeah. pack of Dragos we had in stock. I'm going to tell you right now, though, these are even better. These are way nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these are great. <laughs> All, All right. right. We got wrecked up there. Rectangle. Just received my order of two gallons of limited blue bead maker. Can't wait it. Added on eBay next to the Rag Company Eagle Blanket. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Robert Elliott Sr., how many layers of ceramic spray coating like hybrid solutions can you put it on before it hits maximum? I think two. I don't know. I've never tried layering ceramic spray coatings. Hmm. Like, I found that if you don't lay it right the first time, if you try and lay it the second time, you're going to mess it up. Mm -hmm. Does one reject the other, maybe? Mm. No, you just create very weird high spots, or you get what... That's true, yeah. Or you you get what I call that sap issue, where it looks like tree sap on the car. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, if it would be sticky that second coat. That makes sense. Yeah, Yeah. it literally looks like you have tree sap on your car. So when you go to Mm -hmm. wipe those little dobs off it's like wiping light trees out mm-hmm. <laughs> all right back to bait uh, he says my blue bead maker has been shipped to my friend's place in linwood will be smuggled into canada shortly <laughs> excellent well, that's good hey that whatever you do on your time is your business i think that'll be chemicals. the i think that'll be the first uh blue bead, blue bead maker, maker outside of the u.s wow if it gets to <laughs> makes its way to canada so maybe like mm-hmm. if, you, if there's like a canadian flag take it well we don't know what you look like so we can't do that i was gonna <laughs> say, take a picture next to uh yeah. next to the canadian border and say one got in <laughs> yeah. along along similar lines we've got chris here all right chris mccallum i have a gallon that might go for auction with all this madness lol <laughs> there you go hey 
<laughs> if we can bring the uh, price of bead maker up substantially, <laughs> just like Honda Civics, used oh, Audi yeah. R8s will be used in our Audi future. Used Audi R8s will be in our future. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got Rick here. Morgan's looking different today. Must be the new lighting in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> you know, lighting lighting changes a lot of yeah. things around here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and go up to our buddy, Joe Wetzel. <laughs> What's happening, Joe Vigor Auto Detailing? Hey, people. What's happening, dude? And we got Richard. Richard Wakefield. I'm waiting for the Eagle Blanket Black Market to get started. I'm looking at you, Luke Bergie. So that's <laughs> been going for quite some time. Because oh, uh, there's yeah. been an underground yeah. ring of uh, of uh, eagle edgeless sales in yeah. large, yeah, large, large metropolitan it's, areas. It's shady, but it's like the least shady version of a shady thing. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> All right, right Bait Addict, how's the new Iron Buster product compared to its competitor scent wise? Since they're all pretty similar, I guess whichever smells the best is probably the one to grab. Well, correct. They all have the same active ingredient. That's what makes them. That's kind of the weird thing is like they all have the same backbone ingredient. But then after that, that's where they diverge. So yeah. um, we have haven't you, used it, but it Sid has. Yeah, yeah. So um, the Iron Buster is great. It's fantastic. You hardly get any sulfuric smell at all. Um, and you really just smell kind of cherries that, you know, I mean, not like <laughs> lovely not cherries, cherries, but they're not bad. Not so by we used any to call means, you know. uh, Wolo's uh, fallout remover the scent. We called it farty lemon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it I was mean, like it smelled like lemon, but it was like eh, yeah, a little bit. This but is but pretty everyone liked cherry. it. It's pretty mm-hmm. distinct cherry, and not like Christmas chocolate co- cherry. You know okay. what I mean? Like yeah. so. Okay. I mean, it's a little bit of a harsh cherry, but totally smells fine. You don't. Nice. I mean, well, that'll you be should good. use a yeah. mask, but I'm saying when you don't, um, you're not knocked out by the smell. Um, I like it because when I walk back into my shop, I don't even smell that I've used that, an iron. And that's right. a big. That's a huge that's one. A key, right? Yeah, huge. because that was something for me yep. was that when we would use Ferrex or something yeah. or an iron for mover. For hours, it, it would, would smell. Yeah, yeah. it's just stay yeah. regardless of how yeah. many fans you had. Yeah. And for folks like you who work out of their house, yeah. you know, yeah. you've, you've got you've around. got all your HVAC right. yeah. too in yeah. your garage. Yep. And so basically whatever you're smelling that's really strong in your yeah. in your shop is going to go into your house. Yep. Yep. And so that's kind of a key feature. Yeah, so by Far the best. That's good. The best yeah. iron remover nice. I've ever. I mean, yeah, like l- literally no negative smell. Nice. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Next question from Nick Grooms. There we go. How would you compare fine scratch marring protection from sealants versus ceramic coatings? Looking at Opti Seal bead maker combo versus a coating. Um, so. Opti Seal isn't going to provide you with a lot of scratch resistance. Uh, bead maker is going to make the paint feel a little harder and it's going to make the surface a lot slipperier. So it's mm-hmm. going to help some, but if a scratch is going to happen, a scratch is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, with a ceramic coating versus a sealant, your ceramic coatings have a hardness level that is a little more extreme. Mm-hmm. And one thing we always noticed was when we do a combo between inspiration and bead maker, you would actually, it felt like the car had a candy mm-hmm. shell mm-hmm. on it, a hardness shell that, yeah that really amplified once the bead maker hit it. Mm -hmm. So, um, honestly, if you, if you're looking for scratch resistance, the most scratch resistance then go with a coating. Uh, if you're looking for just protection and you don't really care that it gets scratched Mm -hmm. that much, Mm -hmm. then sealants are just fine because you're just protecting Mm -hmm. the surface and maybe you polish every year. I don't know. And one thing I want to add to that, just because, um, I do coat a lot of brand new cars. And so for me, I always like to mention to the customer that, um, the coating provides me something to fix the scratch. Right. Because yeah. if you're just using a sealant or something, you're still removing far more clear coat than would be ideal, Correct. especially on the new cars. Um, so that's kind of the difference too. They're both going to scratch, but at least the ceramic coating gives me something to fix. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's an important thing for me. Absolutely. All right. Next up, True J seven four seven Anthony. O and R, why does it lose its color after a couple of days? When I fill a bottle up, when I mix it in my five gallon bucket, does it mean it lost its ability to clean? So no, not at all. So O and R, um, the color is not stable on that, especially mm-hmm. once you mix it with water. So while the color fades, right, and so will the scent fade to a certain extent, uh, the cleaning ability is still there, right? Because you're basically what you're taking is a very concentrated polymer and turning the body of water into essentially another polymer, right? You're you're you're, you're diluting the polymer, but it's still a polymer, uh, and so that's why when we've talked about um, how it softens the water naturally and whatnot, 
the, the polymers in there keep the uh, the calcium, magnesium, and things like that that are in your heart or water from really bonding and really adhering to the surface. Um, so it is kind of like a natural water softener on its own. Um, I would say that we've told people that I think I think I think even Ivan said uh, up to about three to six months is how long he would store ONR for diluted, and it was still plenty safe to use in yep. a bottle or a gallon situation like that. Um, it still has the cleaning ability. You're totally fine. It should still actually still feel slick uh, in comparison to normal water. And I find that my ONR, when I dilute it into a gallon, uh, does last longer when I'm using a distilled water. So I'll go to the store, pick up some gallons of distilled water, throw a cap full inside there, shake it up, store it, and that stuff will feel slick as the day I put it in there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just the thing about it. You got to remember your dilution is 256 to 1. So oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you're not putting a lot of product into a gallon of water. No, so not. you've got to think about that. That's a lot of product that mm-hmm. and colorant that has to work yeah. to try and hold a, in yeah. that big of a dilution. Correct. So, yeah. um, can't ask for the world. Right. All right. Next up. Kyle's Detail Garage met Keith here in North Carolina at the Mustang Museum event. Need to try the new PNS products. Yes, you do, yes. Kyle. I'm getting hot. Sorry. Oh, I know. We're <laughs> going to turn on the AC here in a minute. All right. All right. There we go. Hans, Anthony, what's the best dilution ratio for clean wheels in the IK Pro 12? And what color tip did you use? So you're going to want to do like a 10 to 1 minimum. You can't even go stronger than 10 to 1 because it just foams too much. Um, so I would say go with the orange tip, uh, 10 to 1 dilution. So the IK Foam Pro 12, you're adding roughly... I don't know. I want to say it's like maybe 20 ounces, maybe less, even less than that. It might be even 15 ounces. It might be a whole bottle and then fill the whole thing up with water. Can you convert that to metric for him? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, I, so honestly, right now, I'm trying to remember the, 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 ounce, the ounce capacity of the IK Foam Pro 12 off the top of my head right now, and it's, I'm struggling. But anyway, 10 to 1. Same thing with the IK Foam Pro 2, 10 to 1. Uh, then call it good. It'll foam even up to 20 to 1, which is pretty crazy, but uh, don't go any less than 10. Oh, well, there That's you go. Fair. All right, we got Beta up next. Beta Act also going to try Rupes Uno Protect with that bead maker kit. I'll compare it to HD Speed and report back with my baitings. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then we've got. I think Mark. you'll be pleasantly surprised yeah. in that it outperforms HD Speed. Yeah. Tenfold. I mean, yeah. Mm hmm. All right, Mark Davenport. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, glad to see you're all healthy and doing well. Loving that Beadmaker Uno kit. It was the perfect birthday gift to myself. It arrived today just in time for my 40th. Thank you. Happy birthday, Mark. Excellent. Happy 40th. As a fellow 40-year-old, uh, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's one. I don't know about this one. Do you Mike know about Spina. this one? Mike Spina. What's the difference between red soap and pearl? Uh don't I? I have no idea what red soap is. I think it's uh, professional no, product. Right. From PNS, PNS has a red soap, and I've not ever used it, so I can't okay. even answer this question. Ooh, ooh. Um, Keith probably could have, yeah. but um, I I would assume that the red soap is more of a traditional car wash. Yeah, and yeah, pearl you be is turning that into maybe like a pearl is like versatile, yeah. Yeah. right? Like a oh, really high. There was a lot of pink car washes back yeah. in the day, right? Yeah, so yeah. this could be. Yeah. Red I'm sure car it's more wash. of your classic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Regular yeah. soap. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are we breaking sense. for a commercial here in a minute? Yep. One yep. more minute. We'll be up there okay. pretty right. soon. So we got Rick here. All right. Rick Heine, Nick Grooms. I believe OptiSeal and Beadmaker don't mix well. That's wrong. <laughs> and one will probably dissolve no. the other. No. That's wrong. That's so, wrong. Rick, uh, here's how you do it. Nick and Rick, <laughs> OptiSeal, put it on the surface, let it sit. Overnight, preferably. The longer you give OptiSeal to sit on the surface of a car without removing it, the better it is. Then wipe it down to remove any of the leftover agents in OptiSeal, and then you can top it with Beadmaker. Um, that is the key. If you want to just put it on and wipe it off, please wait at least 30 minutes yeah. mm-hmm. uh, before topping it with Beadmaker. But I've always used OptiSeal. Let it sit overnight because it does you know, cross-link and do its own thing, and then it's very easy to, uh, to just give it a quick wipe and then hit it with the Beadmaker. So there you go. So we're going to Take a little two-minute break here, and uh, we'll bring in the next person. Sydney, thank you for hanging yeah, out with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was great. It. Awesome. So two-minute break, and then the next 30 minutes with, I don't know, maybe it's Kyle, maybe it's Chris. <laughs> we'll find I, think, I think it's Kyle. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Kyle. Thanks. <laughs> 
Hello, 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 and welcome to the promo for the Rag Company Podcast. That's right, I'm Dane Hennon. I'm your host of the Rag Company Podcast, as well as our weekly Q&As that appear on the Rag Company YouTube channel. Now, if you're looking for the podcast, you got to head over to the Rag Company Podcast YouTube channel. That's right, we've got a few channels, but if you subscribe to them all, you will not miss your Rag Company content, your Rag Company action. I know you love it. That's why you're watching this. So if you're not familiar with it, you should go check it out. We talk about detailing. We talk about cars. We talk about what we did over our weekends. It's just a chance to get to know, you know, the folks at TRC a little bit better. Go to the Rag Company podcast channel. Go to the Rag Company YouTube channel for the Q&As. And just in general, enjoy, you know, like a warm blanket. It's friendship. It's just something that, that you wear over yourself and you say, gee, this is nice. So we really want you to hang out with the Rag Company crew one way or another, be it the podcast or the q and I'm inviting you, and I know Levi and Anthony are right behind the camera saying the same thing. So, if you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe to the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel, as well as the Rag Company YouTube channel, where we do our Q&As. It's just fun. We want to have you around. We want you to submit your comments. Let us know how things are going. We're all hanging out. It's a good time. And we all learn a bit more about detailing and cars in the process. Now, I will say, when it comes to the podcast, we're not just on YouTube. We're also on Stitcher, Spotify any of your other audio platforms make sure you check because we should be on there and if we aren't let us know and we'll do our best to get on there as well with all that said we just want to say thank you for listening thank you for watching and we hope to see you again hello 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 and welcome back to q a thursday I'm your host, Dane Nehen, and to my left, Levi Gates. Yeah, we're back. And to his left, Anthony Fisher. Hey, hey. And to his left, a new guest. We're back here with Chris. Chris, say hi to the folks at home. Hi, folks at home. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wonderful. Say well, hi to mom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Say hi to your family. Hey, So those guys. of you guys wondering, Chris Woolman is also known as uh, Rennie's Hitman. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and he also owns Octane Detailing yep. in California. And uh, for those of you that may or may not know, Chris also has quite possibly the greatest mobile rig ever. It is designed. Oh, you, you know, there's been some pretty good ones since, but, but no, mine, mine's I'm, not bad. I'm pretty mm. sure yours still holds the holds the key, so or holds <laughs> like the title, it. I should say. I like to think it's a it's the end, of, end of the world vehicle, yes. right? And so for detailing, I, for little, detailing, little yes. apocalypse, uh, yeah, car. like yeah. you know, post apocalyptic world, still detailing cars. Yeah. I'm like, hey, there's some rust on that. Let me take care of that. You know, <laughs> polish that right out. <laughs> there also, you go. great taste in shirts. I just want to point out, I love that shirt. That's awesome. It was it was between this and an, and a Porsche shirt this morning. I went with the Alpha. There Good choices, go. Alpha. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, just so everyone's aware, we got our cameras in here. So, Chris, that's your camera. And then stay close to the mic. And we're going to answer some questions. That's right. If your head moves, your mouth wants to stay pointed at the mic. That's the main I game here. Yeah. Wherever you go, All right. just keep it pointed. Okay. Next I'll throw one. one up here. Clarity Auto Details. Just got my UBS Ultra Black Sponge the other day. What an upgrade. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, I'm it. glad to hear some positive, uh, positive reviews of that. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. Really that's like nice. It. Hey, we just uh, used it in Sydney's shop Did you? Two, uh, two hours ago. Wow. Nice. So. And how was that? It was good. It yeah. was good. Excellent. We got right. Aaron up here. Aaron, so-called life. I see that PNS released Iron Buster. When are you guys going to make a video on it? For a gallon, it's pretty cheap. Detail image for reference. Uh, thanks, man. So, uh, Aaron, we don't actually have it yet. Fun <laughs> fact, that product sold out before it was even available to the public. Right. So, so we couldn't make PNS, a video at it if we didn't have yeah, it. Yeah, PNS literally, <laughs> when they went to announce, like, hey, we're going to be selling Iron Buster. This is the date we're going to be releasing it. Put in your orders. Uh, by the time we got to put in our order as probably one of the largest uh, <laughs> PNS distributors, it was already sold out. But that's so we okay. had to wait. So that's there. that's how amazing the interest was and such an awesome distribution network that PNS yeah, has created absolutely. was that you know, they've, they all jumped on it because they knew, you know, the quality of PNS products and how it was going to, going to be received. So, uh, we're still waiting. Hopefully we'll get it soon and you guys will get to see a video on it. We'd be very excited to do that. So yeah, these guys, I'm sure will make an awesome video on it. Uh, Rennie has done a video on it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, you can find that on Rennie's little YouTube channel. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. All right. So those. if you got questions, watch that. Uh, we got Rick here throwing them up on the screen. Rick now. Clarity. Compared to the Big Red Sponge, I'm hyped, but I already love the Big Red Sponge a lot. So, Rick, everything you loved about the Big Red Sponge, we tried to keep, 
and everything that you don't like about the big red sponge we tried to fix so with the ultra black sponge so uh mm-hmm. yeah try it man i think you'll like it now i'm a fan of this next yeah. username <laughs> <laughs> 1 a.m. 1 a.m. <laughs> I like that. Shout out to the production team for giving the Q&A's facelift. It looks great. Thanks, Thanks man. Thank so big that is shout out behind the Big uh, shout out here. to Gabe, to Nick, to Tim. Yes. So uh, Tim is no longer by himself doing these uh, Q&A's. He's got the, some help. Uh, and this is the uh, first of our actual. Everything's operational. Yeah. No, this Fully is our operational. First Everything's kind of working in sync. Not yeah. to jinx it. Well, we don't, our, yeah, our, are our voices in sync? I, I mean, hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah, you guys, you guys should know too. As I waited to come in here, the guys out there, they're working hard. They are. And they're good. doing a good job. Yeah. yeah. No, we really appreciate it. I'm gonna throw up the next one here. We've got Clarity Auto Detail. Clarity back replying to Rick. Yes, that shape makes such a difference in the hand versus the big red sponge. You're welcome, guys. Uh, the reason for that again is, uh, you know, I love the big red sponge, but my hands no longer can handle a lot of abuse, and can't so handle. I'm. They can't handle things. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to work on products that can make them a little just easier on your hands, a little more ergonomic, uh, so that you guys can continue to keep doing, because I still do this stuff and I still like doing it, uh, but I wanted to make it more ergonomic. So Nice. Got Randy here. Randy DeJorn. I can't say it either. <laughs> DeJorn hey, Mustard. Company and <laughs> Sydney, like greetings from the Netherlands. What's happening, man? How hey, are you? Ran- Randy's awesome. He's one of our m- members of the Detail Mafia, and uh, he works on F-35 fighter he jets. He does. Wow. Yeah. That's Ran- awesome. Randy actually got me uh, a little uh, airplane when we were at SEMA mm, for cool. Augie. Wow. <laughs> when we were doing, you and I doing our... Our, uh, I do remember that, yeah. He walked up and brought that to me. So yeah, that was very a big nice, day, man. Randy. Appreciate yeah. it, brother. All right, we got our friend BJ Slinger saying, "What up, guys?" I'm not even gonna throw it up there. It's such BJ, a short what's up? Uh, followed by Hans saying uh, something. Randy, uh, yeah. welcome, <laughs> Ukvanut, Netherland. <laughs> Wonderful. And then he waves back. Let's throw Paul up here. There you go. All right, Paul Foreman, Levi. When you had your shop, was it you? Or your customer that choosed if it was an O and R wash mm. or a soap and water wash. How did you sell an O and R wash to a customer that didn't know what it was? A uh, couple different ways. So I would just have it available. So if a customer came in and they said, "Hey, look, I want to get a hand wash," I had two types of hand washes. I had a soap and water wash, and I had an O and R wash. And for it, I called it a rinseless wash, and I literally just spelled it out. You know what I was using, what the products I was doing. And I charged a little more for a rinseless wash, even though, fun fact, it took us less time to do a rinseless wash than it did a soap and water wash. And so I just priced it 25 bucks more than my soap and water wash. And I had many customers that would buy it uh, and, and ask for that because they liked it. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of them still wanted soap and water. And that's totally fine. I didn't try to pressure anybody. I would get a customer that would call on Fridays and would come and get his car washed. And he was notorious for, no, I just want soap and water. And he'd stand yeah. outside, smoke a cigarette and watch my guys, you know, Actually, spray the car and foam and do all that stuff. And that was chilling. his thing. And he would pay 50 bucks and then he would tip $50. Hmm. And that was hmm. how he'd do it. And he'd do it, you know, every two Fridays a month. Yeah. I like and that. that was just him. I had another customer that would come in and go only O&R. And he would pay 75 bucks a wash and he wouldn't tip, but he would do that every week. He'd come in, oh. we'd do an O&R wash on his car because it was so fast and quick and he loved the way it looked, but that car was being washed every week. Now, it didn't really matter which way we were doing it. My point was, I'm just going to make some money off this. And yeah. I just let my customers know, look, this is what I'm doing with this wash. This is what I'm doing with this wash. And let them choose. It's very simple. And I didn't, you know, try to push one or the other. All right. All right Luke Bergie's in the house. Luke, he made it. Mr. Regular here. All right. Hey, hey, y'all. I'll be able to be here for a while until I got to go practice for my CDL. Oh, man. He's going to be driving that big rig. <laughs> I wasn't going to show up until I saw Sydney was on. So I knew I had to jump in. <laughs> and that means we are a half an hour behind. <laughs> so that Dane, is 35 we minutes hurry ago. on up yeah, with some yeah, of these right questions here. We've uh, got because Sydney's already <laughs> left, and now it's uh, yep. we're in with Chris. So oh, man. let's burn through some of I'm these. I'm almost just as good looking, though. You are. Yes, you are. I'm saying that. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So uh, we've got Luke following right. up by saying, and I heard someone was talking about my black market scandal. Yeah, you and your <laughs> eagle blankets. 
All right, next one, Dane. Oh, he's not Dane, right. so I don't know how many of these we're going to be able to click on like this. I'm going to go through the more relevant detailing okay. questions, and that's how we're going to do this. So you Levi, guys stay on topic to follow up on rolling. Terminator on leather, I should have specified, specified, used it on a protein spill, upset tummy. Good. Danny, that's the only reason I would say use <laughs> Terminator on leather. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, yeah, it's perfect for that. All, All right. right. Australia Cycling doesn't through. exist. You're talking to an actor. <laughs> Just kidding. Google Australia doesn't exist. Thanks, Aaron. We appreciate that. Uh, for what was all-purpose cleaner dilution? One-to-one -one light cleaning, 20-to-one medium cleaning, 10-to-one heavy clean. Is this correct? Yes. What? No. No, that that's make, opposite. That doesn't make any all sense. Right. One-to-one -one for heavy cleaning. <laughs> no. That's the complete opposite. One to one for heavy, heavy cleaning. cleaning. Yes, twenty to, twenty to one for light cleaning and ten to one for medium. Yeah, cleaning. Yeah, why did you have that all mixed up, dude? Aaron's yeah, Aaron's random life is what it's yeah, sort of like. It is right. random. For science <laughs> sake, Luke Berge says, "Can you foam the all day Anthony clone?" You could, but it'd probably no make everybody throw up in a ten mile radius. Luke, you <laughs> might need some. Uh, Rectangle says, "Try the Uno bead maker on a customer's Audi this weekend. It was blown away, and the yeah. customer was extremely happy with the boss." Like, see, were, were we just were we just making this up? No, no, we weren't just making this nope. up. Did you live for the wipe off Rectangle when you were wiping that off? Were Didn't you, just you like, like that? Were you like, wow, this is the most satisfying like, wow, thing? Levi and Anthony are geniuses. Wait till you have this draw to wipe of? it off. Oh. Life changing. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be insane. There we go. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Clarity Auto Detail says, we think paint gloss smells like bubble gum, lol. <laughs> See, that's the fun fact is so many people think it smells like a different thing. So uh, that's one of the things we've always noticed. Yep. So I think it smells like Air Force One. Yeah, that's, that's what... that's because we ooh. use it there and a lot. And that's what Kyle said. He goes, yep. it always reminds me of Air Force One because that's what we use. So <laughs> G. Davis, Anthony calling Nate a weirdo is the height of leader hosen inspired <laughs> hypocrisy. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. So Lahan says, uh, G. Davis, did you ship my Davis banner yet? Uh, probably not. Yep. Moving on, we have um, uh, G. Davis says, Hans closed and I'm having a full G. Davis canvas painting done for your shop. Oh, it's very nice. What a oh, wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Great. Hey, All right. like one of your <laughs> French girls, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, Hans says it'll be hung with pride. G. Davis <laughs> says, how much extra are Drago's that Dane touched? Well, oh, uh, well, you can have that one. Yeah. You know what? I'll send maybe, you that maybe one, Maybe just this one. <laughs> All right, move down the line. <laughs> sorry, Chris, you weren't expecting the weird half. This is the, the weird half. You, you meant oh, right. right. after You're 4 o'clock is when all the strange things I, happen. Yeah. So. And I feel bad for Kyle because he's so professional. Yeah. We're going to throw he's him gonna into this mix. He's going to get the weirdest ones yeah. We're going to say right. sorry. We're going yeah. to keep Aaron's, this a little more professional. How does PNS today? Auto Shampoo compare to Optimum Car Wash Soaps? So uh, PNS Auto Shampoo is a much thinner soap. Yeah. Uh, in terms of viscosity, so it's a lot less visc or more viscous than uh, Optimum's car wash soap because Optimum's is a very thick soap. Oh, it's uh, the gel. The dilution is almost identical between yeah. the two, um, and honestly, I find the the Pearl PNS Pearl much slicker. Well, the, what's also nice about slippery. the Pearl too is we've used the Optimum stuff in all conditions. I love it. It's one of my favorite soaps. Right. But the second it gets below 50 degrees, it starts to really clunk up, like clump up. Yeah. And you cannot get that stuff to come out of the jar. Because you it's can't like get it to the, You can't get jelly. it to really oh, yeah. glue it either. It turns very like jelly. Like it's kind of like an old, it's kind of like got to be glued from 20 years ago that you've thrown into like a tub of water and mixed <laughs> up. about hair gel. Now. And you're like, and this is not working, right? <laughs> yeah. L, what's that LA looks? Yeah, LA looks. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it, man. Oh, man. We just, uh, we just washed a Mini Cooper at Sydney shop with uh Pearl in a Rensels format. There you go. Oh, 256 nice. to one. Yeah, it actually yeah. works well that way. Mm -hmm. That's it nice is. on that. Yeah. Uh, we've got Bait here. Bait Addict, what's the new brush, Terry? <gasps> so, it's Bait like, Addict. guy we hired. McKee's 37 is running a 365 in orange. That Correct. is Brush Terry. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, coming soon, it's currently in stock, but I don't know where it is in their product, in their, you know, uh, inventory. Uh, Obsessed Garage is going to have the new Brush Terry Blue Creature and mm. Brush Terry uh, Gray Light Gray Car Wash Towel. So mm -hmm. um, the Drago is the first for TRC to be in our new Brush Terry. Um, basically, what it does is it it makes the towel, you know, a Terry weave a lot softer. So and it almost increases the GSM a bit because it makes the towel a little more dense. Um, so even though this is a 365, it feels closer to a 400 GSM. It's realistically about a 380, 390. 
Um, but it just makes the towel feel a little plusher. Well, honest feedback from Chris. What do you think of the new towel, just in terms of feel, compared to what you're used to feeling out well, of Well, I have uh, I have some of the older version. You do? Right. And I'm yeah. a big fan of them. But uh, this does feel good. Yeah, it's you know? soft. I'm hoping really I soft. Could, I'm hoping there's room in the car for me to bring home a few. <laughs> there should be. <laughs> I just think one. we can make yeah. that. One towel. <laughs> All right, we've got Luke asking the important question. When can I buy a case of Drago's? Luke, keep your eyes peeled. Check every single day this That's weekend. Right. <laughs> we hear this weekend is a good time to be looking. That's for all we can Drago's. tell you. Okay, followed up by Aaron. When are you going to make a video of Iron Buster? Aaron, we already answered that as soon as we get some. We don't have any. That's the yep. thing. We haven't gotten any from the first initial launch yet. Yeah. So once we get our, our uh, product in, we'll be able to make a video about it. Yeah. So. Now, gee, I can never tell if he's joking or if this is serious. This feels serious, but it might no, be very, that's that's very layers serious. serious. Joggos are great for gauge clusters. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound funny, but I feel um, like he's trying yeah. Richard Wakefield says, oh, is this Drago similar to what McKees has with the brush terry? Yes, yes exactly. it's a brush terry. All right. And they're both a uh, 365 blend. The difference is the Drago is a different color, and uh, it's just a – it's just a nice workhorse towel with the edge and yeah. all that stuff. Oh, that. oh, the gauge cluster. This is what uh, Luke needs to oh, get. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so, so now cluster. I'm on Sorry, Rutger Luke. here. All right. Beadmaker is dusting on a friend's car from Rutger Muir's. What did he do wrong? How to get the anti-static effect of Beadmaker. So one thing we've noticed when you're applying Beadmaker is to make sure, one, you're not in a very windy area. Two, make sure you're not doing it during a high pollen count day. Um, and uh, three. Let it cure. Let it cure properly. So what we've noticed is if, let's say you're in your garage and you've washed the car, you've pulled it into the garage, maybe you've done some other things and you've sprayed it with bead maker, make sure it stays in the garage during that curing process. So during that curing process, it kind of, the polymers literally flip mm. and change direction on the surface, which causes that increase in gloss, increase in slickness. And what happens is during that time period, We've noticed just in the wild, uh, and we've done this at Monterey and stuff, uh -huh. when you're wiping a car down with bead maker and there's a lot of maybe dust or uh, mm -hmm. something in the air, the during that flipping process of those polymers on the surface, mm -hmm. it seems to attract certain things, dust. We saw bugs that would get like all of a sudden land on the cars or things like that. That's true. Um, yeah. And so what we've always recommended is just make sure you've, Park the car inside of a garage. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. If you, you know. can. Yeah, if you have the ability to do it, um, or just keep it out of a dusty environment. Well, and, and the hard part is you got to remember, you're in a dusty environment. If yeah. that stuff is, it's, Beadmaker isn't making a car dust. Yeah, there's yeah. not something magical. That dust is in the air. Stuff. Correct. That's right. And what you've done is you've now cleaned a surface and then put a very slick protectant on that is, you know, basically needing to cure. You got to yeah. think about it as if you were painting that car. <laughs> And you were laying mm. oh, some yeah. fresh clear. Oh, geez. That's a lot of dust in the air that is going to be settling on the surface of yeah. that fresh paint. And so it's the same kind of thing. You want to try and make, you want to limit the amount of dust in the air. Yeah. So I like making sure that, you know, if my concrete is wet, you know, that if I'm out there I'm on the like, driveway, yeah, you know, yeah. like the, wa the the ground's wet. I'm trying to limit the amount of dust, making sure my neighbors aren't out there with a leaf blower blowing the road or yeah. anything like that in the air. Um, and that's really the best way to cut. I typically go to my local uh, wizard and ask him to cast a, a non-dusting spell. Ooh, I like oh, that. Okay. Yeah. It is really efficient and it is really nice. That works. Um, moving on here, we have uh, Tofik21 says, uh, how do you get rid of water spots on windows? Quite easily. Um, watch our video that we have on the Ride Company YouTube channel where I take my wife's forerunner that she just is attracted to hard water. That's strange. She so finds hard she, water attractive. She finds her... It, well, hard water finds her. So what you need to do is watch that because through all the vehicles that she has owned, there's always been hard water spots on them. So we funny won, you've made a video uh, on every car that she's owned. Yeah, I know she's with only, hard water. She's only, she's, only, she's only owned two. We'll see what comes up next. But um, her Elantra, we did a a paint uh, water spot removal video, one of our best yet. And then we also have a window water spot removal video. It's also really really helpful. And so watch those. It should give you uh, the answers you're looking for. But compounds polishes work great. Steel wool works great. Um, well, and there's some new those. PNS products that. Can and there's some new PNS too. products, yeah. Clarity Cream that we've already talked about earlier. Uh, would be another great option. So yep. let's keep going, Dane. All right, moving and, along. And uh, oh, here we go. It's a, an Italian name. I like this. Vito. Uh, Vito. Um, that was that. So what's that? Uh, that last name there. That I'm not going like, to. Uh, Mauricio Lago. 
Mercy yeah. Lago. I have a five gallon jug of bead maker from last summer. I've been having a problem with it leaving a greasy residue all over the paint. I've tried everything there is, new towels, surface prep, etc. Have you been shaking that five gallon jug? That's what I was five, just wondering. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. lot of product, man. So if you you need to make sure that you're agitating five gallons of product before you're putting it in whatever vessel yeah shake that thing up shake it up my guess is you've uh it's separated because it is it's going to separate it's got a lot of monomers and polymers in it um and uh it's going to do that and that's just normal so we've always recommended that's why it comes in these pints behind you also want to make sure it has it been exposed has it been exposed to too much air right has it been opened up has it been weather right if it's from last summer right bead maker does have I don't want to say has a has a specific shelf life, but we try to tell people to try to use your bead maker, um, use it up within a few months, right? I try to go through my gallons of bead maker at least. Uh, I go through a gallon probably once every three months, and I try to use it often, right? Yeah. Um, so any detail product that sits for a long period of time will probably not give you the same effect that you're wanting. I'm not saying that this five gallon can't last you a year, but if it is going to last you a year, go through the procedures of, of shaking it up, stirring it up, checking on it, making sure that um, it's still usable. Right? Yeah, there you go. It's inexpensive it's, enough you can keep You warm. know, if it's yeah. really warm outside too, that could uh, play into it a little bit. True. And how much product you're putting on the car, if it's warm as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we tell guys if you're getting a little streaking or – um, resi- greasy residue, I'd, I'd call that probably streaking. Yeah. You could you could use a little paint gloss to do cleanup afterwards, too. True. Yep. Right, and like we've talked, use more on the towel, less on the surface. Yeah, yep. that, that approach, too. All right, Dean, what else All right, we next got one. here? Next up. Levi's ready for got, one. Let's go out to bait here. Bait Addict, thank you, Sydney. I'll grab a gallon once I'm done. I didn't realize how bad McGuire's icon, iron decon smelled as I was used to it. When people picked up cars from my place, they could still smell it a bit. Yeah, that's that's the problem with it, man. So, all right, Carolina Detail Supply. What's up, guys? Finally made it for the Q&A. Got to support the PNS fam. We miss all of y'all, and hopefully we'll get to see you guys at SEMA, depending on how things go with the Rona. I feel sad because I, you know, the last time I got to hug them was at Mobile Tech. Yeah, that was a minute ago. So, uh, <laughs> Brandon and Meredith Ward and, Levi, and the whole gang Levi over there. Levi needs a physical... Um, what would I call that? It's I need a, physical contact with physical people. Physical contact physical with people. touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm known people. for my hugs, and yeah. this is, Corona has hit me very hard because I'm not <laughs> able to give out the number of hugs that Correct. I'm used to. Correct, yeah. I, it's just your quota is right. not being met. Crave, I crave that <laughs> hug. Yeah. So, huh, we're jumping It's very nice to be able to give Chris a hug this morning. <laughs> I, and, I, I, I got a good one. Because I, I missed that. Yeah. So. G. Davis, Hans, and uh, Bait Addict are all having a side conversation. Okay. So I'm going to skip to another Sorry, boys. related. Sorry, guys. Normally Ooh, this is the, the fun half. Alkaline Trio <laughs> with, the, uh, the, with the great comment here says, uh, Blue Bead Maker arrived today. I can confirm that the scent is summery drink light. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we did you know, it. I'm sitting here. And I have not seen or smelled blue bead maker. What? Yet. What? Kyle was out there. Yeah. Anthony was. Do we out have? Free smells. Do we have anybody out there in the in the, in the booth <laughs> that can bring the gallon from inside the studio in here? All right, Thank here you. we go. Next, Luke Berge. <laughs> All right, can we take a moment to say how fantastic a job y'all did with this studio? I absolutely love it. Thanks, Luke. We appreciate it. We're trying, man. We know there's a little bit of difficulty. Apologies that not all the comments have been read because we are trying to make it so that everybody can see the comments that are posting on there. And Dane is trying his hardest. Uh, and like he said, you know, we we are seeing what you guys are saying. He's just trying to get them get through. Correct. So we can They're make still sure. like almost half an hour behind. <laughs> all right. So Carolina Detail Spry, Kyle's Detail. We know where you live, and we will sell you all the PNS you can handle. That almost there sounds you go. like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Here we go. You can smell some of this. Chris, the next one, oh. Luke Berge. Warning to all. What? Oh. Well, can I get Chris's oh, review really weird. quick? Took it away. I want him to confirm that it smells like summery yeah. drink. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah. It definitely smells like a summery drink. <laughs> it does. <laughs> kind of a rocket pop? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. It. It's, just, it's good. Wait till it gets in the air, man. It's like it's like I said, once it gets, it's, it's so free and fresh. Yeah, you got to release it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's do the Luke one here. <laughs> We'll go back to Luke here. There we go. Warning to all, don't talk about products with Sydney. She will make you go broke telling you new awesome products to try. But I will say I have not been disappointed, though, with any product she had me try. <laughs> there you go. Sydney's great at that. All right. I Ken. had to tell her this morning. You know, She's like, have you tried this yet? I'm like, no, Sydney, I have to buy all my products. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ken says, I've been using the blue FTWs anyway, so when I get my gallon of blue bean, bean maker, I'll be all set. There you go. And Alkaline Trio, Anthony. Yes, okay, so you're correct. So basically you're looking at, I mean, close to 200 ounces at that point, right? Close to under 200 ounces. You are using that whole bottle of, of, of 16 ounce or uh, I think what, 16 ounces of, of, uh, of Wowo's uh, Clean yep. Wheels. Yep. So just dump that whole bottle in, fill that up to capacity, stir it in, let that thing rip. Now, I want to answer this one because it's actually incorrect. Laza Richards wants to know, why does Beatmaker have no UV protection? Spreading lies is what's going on <laughs> it, in here. It does. Maybe, maybe Laza just doesn't know. Laza. It does. Laza, you can go back and check out when we actually interviewed Dave Phillips and talked heavily about Beadmaker and everything in it completely break it down in all the science podcast that says all full, about bead maker with podcast. the chemist yeah. everything in there yes. just because we didn't put it on the I think, I label think the label got yeah, um, wasn't on this label yeah it doesn't mean it doesn't have it it does yeah. so all right. all right life of brian hey trc can't wait to get my order of creatures and detailers helper belt you're about to make a lot of money with that detailers helper belt brian you save 30 minutes of the detail that's right <laughs> Rick, excuse the wrong advice. I thought that since both ooze and beadmaker are polymer-based, one would get dissolved. Chemistry ain't really my thing. Yo, no worries, Rick. We understand. That's all right, Rick. I failed chemistry as well. And yeah. look at me making the scent of blue beadmaker. <laughs> 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 I've succeeded. Oh, Life of Brian. By the way, congratulations, Anthony, on the new house. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> very excited. A lot of work. All right. All right. Well, I was throwing that up so you could say hi. But uh, let's see. We've got next up. Luke Berge. Several small ones. <laughs> Dane's still waiting on the email, says Luke Berge. Uh, uh, Kakavin says, hey, guys, keep up on the keep up on your work. Okay, we will. All right. Now i got to cycle through this. I'm trying to find the next, like, detailing-related comment. Ah, uh, whoop. There's Whoa, one right there you jump. just missed. So Luke Berge asking, are you eliminating the standard Terry Weave towel to switch to a brushed Terry? Uh, Luke, so... You were here in December when we talked about this. So we are looking into that. However, there are some towels that just do better in a normal Terry Weave format. Yeah. So we are holding back and keeping some towels in the Terry Weave yeah. and releasing other towels in the new brushed weave. So yeah. that's what we're doing. Okay. Important question down here. So is the McKee's towel made by you guys from Bait Addict? Yes. It actually yeah. says... They, they say it right By the there. rag company. Sorry. Yeah. Our friends at the rag company made this towel for us. It literally says it on the listing. It says in the video, too. And in their video. Yeah. Our friends at the rag company made this towel. What we did was <laughs> make them a towel in that Pantone, which is part of their logo. Yep. So. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, here we go. Oh, that was the workhorse towel question. Bait oh, Addict, yeah. is this the new workhorse towel that will do everything, Levi? Yes. Yeah. That's how we've always sold the Drago is as a as the uh, workhorse. It's the one towel to rule them all and in the darkness well, behind them. But it lost in the battle in the van. It's fine because it's the comeback, right? It's the Let's comeback. This yeah. Is yeah. The comeback. Yeah. Now, this is an it's important like, one to answer here next. Yep. Um, so uh, Tree747 says, why uh, PNS dynamic dressing so expensive? $90 uh, a gallon. Is this right? Yes, this is right. And that is because you are buying a concentrate. Right? That's right. Richard it's a uh, right it's a concentrate, so you get to mix that how you like. It's actually my favorite dressing. I I use yeah. it a lot. Yeah. Um. It also has to do with um. Uh, what's it based on? I can't re remember the the chemical. But anyway, it's a it it goes up and down in price. You know, yeah, just like the cost fluctuates. of fuel does. It fluctuates. Yeah. So the price of of it the active ingredient mm -hmm. fluctuates as well. And so yeah, like he's saying, you can dilute it five to one. You can dilute it twenty to one. You can dilute it 10 to 1. So you got to remember, you're buying a gallon that'll make you 5 gallons or 10 gallons of mm -hmm. product or even 20 gallons if you have like a dilution machine or something. So, yeah. Yeah. And keep in mind, Shine All is an, is an RTU. It's ready yeah. to use out of the gallon, right? And so, But it's not dynamic. It's a different yeah, it's product. Not different it's a different product, but dynamic dressing is a concentrate. So you're getting a lot of product in that yep. gallon. So, All right. Um, Anthony, can I have the number for your no dust wizard? Would love to use him once in a while. Lol. He's he's local. He doesn't really have the ability to like teleport at this moment, but I will. He's a let wizard. You know. Come on. Yeah. I, he's learning, Dane. Oh, okay. The yeah. least he can do is just All remove right. dust. <laughs> Chris, thank you for coming in and hanging no. out with Am us. We appreciate it. Your thirty minutes are up. All right. 
And uh, so, Sorry, guys, make sure talking, you check out <laughs> check out Chris Woolman, uh, Chris Woolman underscore detailer. You can also yes. look at Octane dot detailing on Instagram. Yep. To see some of his work and what he's oh. up to. And real quick, everybody, say happy birthday to my eight year old daughter today. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday. Joe! Hey. So, thanks, guys. <laughs> You're yeah, welcome, man. Thank thanks you, for coming All right. on. All right, two minute break. Hey guys, it's Andy with the Rag Company. And do you like cars? <laughs> Do you like washing cars? Do you like watching other people wash cars in an impromptu interview setting? Boy, do we have the show for you because it's called Wash Wednesday and it can be seen at the Rag Company YouTube channel in which I host that show of all people, believe it or not. So what this show is all about is that we pull in people locally from the car community as well as travel from the other side of the country to basically team up with YouTubers and other really cool people to wash their cars as well. So it's just a lot of fun. Now what happens is we bring these people on that often don't know how to wash their cars, believe it or not. So we show them new tips, tricks, and techniques to learn how to wash them properly, as well as interview them about their car, how they got into cars, and why they chose maybe that car. And then at the very end, go and take it for a drive, which is really, really cool. It's a really fun experience. The Wash Wednesday series has been around for a couple of years now. We have plenty of episodes coming up, so don't go anywhere. You want to check these things out, as well as a ton of our other channels and other videos that we have on the Rag Company YouTube channel, the FAQ channel, the podcast channel, you name it. There's tons of stuff throughout those channels and those videos. So make sure to check those out as well. But I think Wash Wednesday is going to be great for car enthusiasts and people that like watching other people wash their cars in an impromptu interview setting. It's a lot, but trust me, it works. So head to the Rag Company YouTube channel, check out Wash Wednesday. And if there's any cars that you want to see down in the comments, leave them down below. We'll make sure to have those in an upcoming video. All right, catch you later. And welcome back to the Rag Company Q&A Thursdays. I'm your host, Dane Hennen. To my left, Levi Gates. Yeah, we did it. We're in the final Man, block. Last quarter. All right. Next up, Anthony Fisher. Final countdown, Dane. Let's do it. All right. And to the left of him, we've got a new guest. Yet another. Man, it's been crazy. But Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dane. No, it's, it's uh, great to have you here. And this is your first time in town here? Yeah, I'm a first time to Boise. Awesome. Nice. Well, hopefully you can help us answer some of these questions because I know there's a lot of them. So for those of you guys wondering, Kyle has a extreme detailing in yes. uh, Southern California. He's a mobile shop as or mobile detailer as well as he has a shop that he works out of. Um, and you guys do a ton of RVs and boats. That's yeah. like your kind of your bread and butter. Kind of specialist. Kind of fell into that. But yeah. Bread and butter. It's, it's the, I think and it's air, the area. You do aircraft too. I do aircraft. I have a couple companies we work for, but just seems to be the area I live in. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. wild. Well, when Dane gets some jet skis, right, we'll bring him down, right? Go <laughs> rip on those skis, a little bit. Lie. Dane's a jet ski guy. I know. <laughs> I can see Dane on a jet ski. <laughs> yeah, fun, see him. fun. All right. Well, I'm going to throw up some questions here for you guys. <laughs> With Dane's sunglasses on jet <laughs> yeah. ski, I can see that. Oh, it's so good. All right. Vito Maurizio. I'm local to the polishing school. Rick and Chad, great people, and P&S has awesome products. Shout Very out. cool. Awesome. Very Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Polishing School is a great PNS distributor. <laughs> All right, we got Global Performance says, "Is there an average shelf life for ceramic coatings?" I have some about 15 months old, not opened. Um, so we answered this a little earlier, but on opened coatings, uh, on unopened coatings, I would say 15 months isn't too old, right? I yeah, think. as long as that yeah. seal's not broken. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you want to check for that because sometimes air can get into that even though they are technically sealed. It, it finds its way in, so you just want to make sure that the uh, the coating hasn't begun to uh, gunk up inside. Yeah, so. there you go. Next up. All right. Clarity Auto Details. Inside of windshields always give very light streaks for us. Looks like almost like buffer trails on the inside of the window. Using stoner, invisible glass, and a black diamond towel. Any tips? So a couple things. One, I like using the black diamond wet. So my thing is if you do have glass cleaner, I like to saturate that towel with that so that I can actually scrub and clean that glass. And then you can go back over it with another black diamond if you like, or any other towel in your arsenal. Uh, preferably, I'm a big fan of going over it with a waffle weave, and that way you can pull the pull the leftover um, streaks and things like that. 
But there's no wrong way. You can actually flip those and go wet with a waffle weave and go dry with the uh, black diamond. Like, that's how Anthony likes to wet do to, it. Wet to dry. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Next on up, the environment. Life of um, Brian. Life of Brian says, damn, one gallon of bead maker in three months on your Grom. Wonder how much weight it added. <laughs> if anything, I go faster, right? Because I'm just, it's more it's slicker. It's more aerodynamic. And, well, I, and you also have a hard time staying on that. Grom, yeah. Because it's so slippery. It, I do. I do, right? The, like, the front wheel comes up. I'm you sitting there. I'm, I'm hanging just... off. It's dragging me behind it. I'm like, stop this crazy train. <laughs> um, next question, Dane. All and right. uh, I am going to uh, pass this over to uh, – uh, I like this right here. So I'm going to pass it over to Kyle here. Any suggestion when it comes to buying the best DA polisher, I want to buy one? Well, I would say stick with the, the top brands, the quality ones. Okay. We have Rubes. We have Flex. Great mm-hmm. tools. And also, what are you going to be using it for? You know, Excellent question. You, you have rotary. You have forced. You have dual action. So – um, what are you working on mostly? If you're just doing light polishing, you may want a, you know, a large throw or a, a, a 15 mil throw. But if you're doing cutting, get a, a melee or a 3401 or a rotary. Yeah, because they're asking about a DA, but for yeah. their needs, it may be a case where a forced action is a better tool. A well, forced DA, I, I like him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So moving along. A lot of folks catching up in the comments. Yes, True J seven four seven. We did get to you. Don't worry. Rockline Trio says, Dane. In these challenging times, I try to support my local wizarding community. <laughs> they can only conjure podcasts via moonlit sacrifice. Could you help me out and start uploading via ritual blood <laughs> letting? Sounds I'm gonna great, say that's Alcon. a that's a yeah. hard pass. Dane, for now. Dane, <laughs> just answer the question. Is that a no or a yes? I, I mean. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little wishy washy on it because uh, I don't want I don't <laughs> want to I want to incriminate myself. Okay, so moving along. What uh, was True Jay's question that he was so mad about? It was the one about dynamic dressing. Oh, we talked we answered down, that. and we answered it a while ago. But he just spammed the comments. Okay, guys, so. you gotta understand. We're gonna get to these as we get to them. But everybody's comments are important. There's, there's a and delay. we're trying to do this, and and Dane is also trying to moderate all these. So we apologize to those of you that we didn't get to your comments, but. This new system, we're trying to make it work as it best we can. It helps if you make one comment that's longer rather than several small, yes. bitty ones. Yeah. yeah. There we go. All, all right. right. Alex Sector. Easy, dudes. Hope you're all good and staying safe. What's your guys' views on Poor Boy products? As I use them a lot, and I think they're pretty tip-top, but I never see much about them on the old Interconnect. Alex I see Sector. on the forums. Yeah. So, yeah, Poor Boys is a good company, but, again, they don't have a lot of uh, – they don't have a big – presence as you see the like we said then in on the internet yeah. but i think that's part of their brand dynamic and the way they do things the charm is word of mouth Kyle, have you yeah. used them um i've used their quick detailer it's been a long time though okay okay, okay. yeah uh let's see we've got aaron here update <laughs> on the optimum clay towel yes it is uh so fun fact the optimum clay towel is going to be the rag company ultra clay towel mm. um so Optimum is uh, discontinuing that towel, but we have picked it up. So We really like it. Yeah, so. we loved it. We've had a lot of great success with it. And so what we did this year is we're going to make it bigger. It's going to be a 12 by 12, uh, and it'll be a clay towel, obviously. It's the ultra clay towel, just like what you got from Optimum, but now it's going to be a rag company edition. And uh, what's awesome about it is all those great things. However, it is on the water currently. So we will be receiving it. You know, hopefully by the end of the summer, you'll be able to get your hands on it. And uh, yeah, the boat's excited. only so fast, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and with COVID, it's hard to get things manufactured in the right amount of time and get things shipped and all that kind of Put stuff. Put a word in with my wizard. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. big clay towels, you know. Yeah. So we wanted <laughs> to go bigger. Ones just don't fit. Yeah. yeah. The old one was. I know what geez. you mean. Yeah. 12 by 12. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony has small hands. No, I do not. <laughs> I'm going to put that one back on the screen. Yeah. All right. The new IK spray bottle looks interesting. Any spec or details on this bottle? Uh, it's a 32-ounce spray bottle. Um, it's got a nice hearty yep. base. Um, it's got a lot of great little features. Um, but, again, guys, we don't have a timeline as to when it's going to arrive. Wanna, I don't want to hype you up yeah. too much because – it's worth hyping you up, but I don't want you guys to lose interest. So I'll like wait to get you guys. It's gonna be some time. He's just showing. You know, he's just of, giving you a I'm little bit. Warm of, me up a little, a little bit. A tasty taste. I want to take you out on a few dates, right? Mm-hmm. I see. You know, I want to wine and dine you. Don't finish that I... sentence. All right, moving <laughs> along. We've got okay. Mary Beth. Anybody using a Grioche G9? No, none of us. No, have tried none it yet. of us. No. 
Ah, Sorry. Alkaline Top Hat. Alkaline back. How does dynamic dressing fare on spring mix <laughs> salads? Do you suggest a balsamic vinegar? Um, I don't eat vegetables, mm. so um, I'm an anti-vegetarian. You madman. Yeah, I, I eat like a lot of meat, cheese, breads, those kinds of things. But the yeah. smell of dynamic would make me want to eat a salad. Yes, oh, it okay. would. Dynamic smells go. delicious. Wait, <laughs> what does it have to do with anything? I, I must well, have I missed that. Okay, anyways. He wanted to, put a dre- he wanted to know how dynamic dressing, dressing would be on a salad. Happen. The word dressing is in the it name. It would be like a, like a, one of those mustard uh, dressings. Have you ever had one of those like, honey mm-hmm. mustard dressing? Oh, mm-hmm. Delicious. Yep. yep. All right. Space Cowboy, any good way to get rid of hard water spots before having to polish it out? Yep. Funny thing. We talked about that earlier, so go check out our video that we've made. We made two videos on hard water spot removal. Um, we have a video on paint and a video on glass. Go to the Rag Company YouTube channel. Search it. Watch it. Learn. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Yeah. Boom, boom. Next up. Raul. Hey, PNS team. <laughs> I just used Iron Buster. What a great product and smells better than others. Super fun to know that Raul got Iron Buster before any of us. Wow. So maybe can you send us a sample? Really we're, great. We're still waiting really to find excited out. excited about that. Thanks, oh, Raul. Excited. Appreciate yeah, it, brother. That's funny. <laughs> Another DA suggestion question. Ryan Wilson, great work, guys. I need a good group DA polisher suggests. Um, I like Rupes DA polishers. I know that Flex makes some good DA polishers. Uh, there's the Great Porter Cable DA polisher. Yeah. Um, the Great dep- Porter Cable. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah. will write books about that machine. Back in my day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grios <laughs> makes some good machines. So the, the point is, um, it depends on what you're using it for. If you're going to be yeah. working on your own car and your garage and you're not more than a hobbyist, um, you know, Porter Cable or even the Harbor Freight will do just fine for what you're doing. It's a short throw machine. You're not going to have any issues. If you are planning on doing some cars, you're going to be working on them. You're going to be maybe doing this for a side gig on the weekends. Spend the money. Invest in either a Flex or a Rupes polisher. Um, take the time to do some training to get some, you know, education behind it. Yeah. Learn what you can because it's just going to make your life a lot easier. You're going to be able to get through them a lot quicker and faster. Because if you're going to start doing this for a business, as Kyle knows very well, time is money. Yes, it that's is. right. And they pay for themselves real quick. Yep. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Mike. Mike Spina, love Levi's trick on cleaning glass. When cleaning the outside, clean up and down, and on the inside, left to right. That way, if you missed any spots, you'll see what direction you went wrong. <coughs> Elbow cough. <laughs> very nice. Next up, oh, we got uh, Sans One says, "Hey guys, any tips and tricks for small?" microfiber load wash i just have one car to wash so i don't have about 15 towels to wash afterwards um oh so i have about 15 towels i don't want to mix them all in one big load for possible contamination this is where it gets kind of this difficult. is easy you just well, buy more towels i know <laughs> it gets more difficult the easy answer is buy more towels like levi said but i understand where you're coming from because a lot of people that are just getting started or starting their microfiber collection you know the easy answer to be just to throw everything else in right and, and just and just throw it in and but then cross contaminate I understand you don't want to do that, but you also don't want to leave your towels sitting outwards for long periods of time because the sealants that you may have used or the waxes or whatever it is could harden up. So what I would probably suggest doing is try to um, run the washer at the uh, the lightest uh, well, load you setting can possible. Set a, you yeah, can you set, can set the size of yeah, your load. Yeah, so you could do like a like a twenty minute wash or whatever it or is for for your low for your, load, low water yeah, level yeah, load, just a low, like, low water level load. Um, but I really do. I mean, honestly, I'm not just saying this. I really do suggest buying more of the towels that you do love and that you are going to utilize. Um, and then if it, when it comes down to your sealants and stuff, you're going to have to start justifying those loads because they are um, – towels are investments. And the better that you take care of them, the longer they're going to last. Um, it, it really just depends on how crazy you want to get. But I know that at least after one of my washes um, with – traditional maintenance right and keeping up on things towels not or my car's not always that filthy so in my load from a wash right i'll typically wash my drying towel towels whatever i'm using uh my touch-up towels my door jam towels i'll throw in my wash mitt um any other kind of towels i'm doing some other small cleanup with right on lightly on lightly soiled stuff and then what i do is i take my wheel towels and my really dirty stuff and i kind of throw them in a bucket and wait for next week's wash and then i'll wash those uh, in one load together so um yeah. Tackle it as yeah. you want. But. All right. Next up. Bait Addict, have you guys noticed any difference in how fast it is to correct a section with a first-gen Rupes compared to a Mark II or three? I just wanted to discuss that a bit. So, Bait Addict, I haven't seen a difference in 
and that's just me because maybe You've got I'm them all too. I've I got mean. all of them, and I honestly the kamikaze backing the play. kamikaze <laughs> backing some stuff uh, done. Uh, woken up that first that yes, the first yeah. gen. This uh, is spinning <laughs> way too fast. <laughs> it's dangerous, it's, but I sure do love it. Yeah, <laughs> it is dangerous, but it is it's uh, for me. It's technique. It's not the it's not the yeah, machine. Yeah. It's the technique yeah. in which I utilize it. Kyle, so, have you used any of the beginning of the early Rupes machines? Yeah. 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 I really like the new one though. The Mark two fifteen. Mark, Mark three fifteen. Yeah. yeah. It That's just feels more planted. ergonomic. Yeah, it feels very good. The trigger, this the dial. Yeah, it's like, like a the nice tool. cord that it comes with. Yes. No, okay. I don't. I See, love it's, that it's longer a controversial cord. opinion. But I'm mobile. Like it or not. Yeah, he's so yeah. Yeah. mobile guys events, are yeah. think a little different, and where I don't want to have cords. Yeah, in, sure. In yeah, the same you want yeah, yeah, few extension cords if you can. Plus, um, doing RVs, then my cords on the ground. That's true. And or I tie it on the ladder. I can move free. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that yeah. Makes especially sense. on yeah. a boat too. I mean, if you're when you're reaching upwards and things like that, and being able to walk around it makes a big difference. Yeah, I kicked it over to the next one. All from right, bait. next one from Bait Attic. The extra torque may be great, but if I never need to go up to speed six in most settings on the ES, what's the benefit aside from ergonomics? Well, ergonomics. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, kicking it up into speed is only dependent on the product and the pad choice that you're using. Some pads, like if I'm using the Buff and Shine Maroon Eurof uh, Eurofoam, I run my speed a little higher. I'm in that four, five, six range, depending on the product that I'm doing. Now, on the um, on like a wool or like an HDO from Lake Country or something, um, I can run in that three, four range and not have any issues. But it really just depends on the pad and the product that I'm using. Um, also, the car, certain angles, certain sides. It lends itself better. My whole goal on a on with a Rupes is to continue rotation and not stall. And so if I have to crank the speed up to prevent that, I will because I will adjust the speed based on my body. Yeah. You know, makes so. sense. Makes sense. Space Cowboy. Oh. <laughs> will we see the all day anthony civic on a wash wednesday i hope so that would be really cool That'd be um neat if we could get a hold of him i would love that to come in i'll put in a good the word car. like i said i'll just ask him if yeah be i think okay. we should try it i think we should see if we can make that happen i think that would be fun i wonder if he would say yes yeah, yeah i want to see what he looks like yeah i think that's cool. weird i mean your car looks so much like his but i know they're different yeah they're different cars yeah yeah different just, cars. just a big fan all right, Life, Life of Brian. Brian, any tips on cleaning hard-to-reach glass? For example, the little triangle piece of glass next to the side mirrors on the Volkswagen Golf GTI. <laughs> Golf. Uh, uh, <laughs> the little triangle piece of glass Different next model. to model. And that is a very <laughs> small triangle. I usually just shove a towel in there. Hmm. I yeah. soak it, shove a towel, and just kind of twist it with my fist. Yeah. Next up. That's how I do that. I, yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got Clarity here. Yeah. Clarity says, uh, so the new clay towel, same pricing as the old Optimum one. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get that out there. I think you guys will like it. Um, yeah, I think you'll be excited. I think you'll be excited. Uh, Aaron's says, if the clay towel is fine, will it work on a car that's never been clayed in its life, or do I need a medium-grade clay towel? Yes, it's fine. By literally fine, it's fine, and it's fine. You can use it on a car that's never been clayed before. Yeah, and um, if you want them, that's when we recommend going with a clay bar. If you've, yeah. got to, if you've got to really get some heavy clay out, that's not – I don't recommend a clay towel for a heavy removal. I'm, I'm talking like – you're, you're we're talking heavy removal. Yeah, we're talking pretty heavy because I've been able to do a lot with a fine-grade Well, we've towel. taken those junkyard hoods, man, with the fine-grade clay towel and brought them back to life uh, in terms of the slick feel and getting them completely decontaminated yeah. with just the clay towel. Um, but there has been times where we pulled out a hood and we said, okay, this is just too soft and we don't want to do more damage by, mar by sure. marring the, 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 the hood, uh, trying to get it out rather than just go grab a, a firmer clay. What's so. the what's the mental math you do when you run into that, Kyle? It's your yeah, I, I do whatever. Depends on what the customer is paying for, right? Yep. But I don't want to mar something unless I'm going to be polishing it, right? Yeah, if sure. I'm going to be doing a paint correction, I want it as clean as possible and I'm not yeah. worried about marring. Yeah. But if it's just a you know basic exterior wash clay and bead maker, then I'm going to probably go with a lighter, like a clay bar or something, if it's dark paint. Yeah. Sure, sure. If it's white paint, silver paint. <laughs> yeah, it's open season. Do a little <laughs> test. Let's take a look, and <laughs> hey, we're we good. Hey, we can knock it out. Yeah. 
All right, next up, Alkaline Topat. Anthony, will you publish Wash Wednesday's OnlyFans page, or is that a discussion page exclusive? Yes, <laughs> discussion <laughs> page exclusive. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later, Alkaline Trio. <laughs> Send you the link. All right, I, Richard Wakefield, is the new clay towel going to be more expensive now that it is larger? It was already pretty expensive, in my com- opinion. Now, you got to think about that, Richard. Yes, it is expensive, but you've got to think about how hardy and strong that towel was and the ability to get a ton of uses out of it. Yeah. So it's a cost per use version. How many cars would you say you did with the the older one? I'm still using it. And yeah. I'm probably I'm, over 100 and it's been two years. Dude, I've done, I've probably done yeah. 30, 35 cars with that clay towel that I have, right? And I bought that um, a year and a half ago, whatever it was. And then the towel that I used for the Adam LZ Wash Wednesday, the first prototype, had already been had already one. been used for, for a almost year. a year. Yeah, yeah, almost a year. And and I used it, worked perfectly fine. It's guys, that towel is strong, and you got to think of it from a cost per use standpoint. So if yeah. you're getting a hundred uses out of that towel, that's not expensive. And at that all. towel, let's say it's thirty five, forty bucks, or forty five bucks. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of uses. I mean we're talking forty, fifty cents a use. Clay bars don't last that no, long. Clay bars don't no, last that don't. long. And they cost nearly that price for quality clay bars. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah. you drop it, it's toast. It's toast. Whereas these, you can clean them off. Well, yeah, yeah. You drop you it. Exactly. You can, well, you yeah. go out and buy a kit at you know, the big box store and go buy you know, a Mother's or Maguire's kit, whatever it is. Spend 15 bucks, right? Um, you get sometimes one piece of clay, sometimes two pieces of clay. You drop one on the ground. So typically people say, oh, that's done, right? So I'll have yep. this one extra piece of clay. You use it and abuse it. And then you try to store it. You leave it stored in the box, up putting it in a bag, and then you come back three months later to find, oh, God, this clay got really bad, and all I have left is this crappy quick detailer that I have left to use. Yeah. And then you're out of, you're out of that money. That yeah. was a very in-depth, uh, you know, uh, No, but the point is, like, thing, if, but, you're, if you're, you know, you got to think about it from a, from a personal standpoint as a customer. If you're only using that clay towel once a year and you're buying it, okay, that thing's going to last you the rest of your life if you take care of it. If you're running a production business like Kyle is, you need those to last a long time because you're going to have employees that are, maybe you've got a new guy working and he doesn't know. And you're like, Hey, I just need you to wipe this on the surface. And he grabs a clay bar and drops it on the ground. And maybe he's dropped three clay bars. Yeah. And you're like, dude, I uh," like, that's a cost. Getting your fix. But if he has that, uh, (laughs) if he has that clay towel and he (laughs) drops it three times, just rinse it off. He's back to work, and you're none the. You Happened to me last week. It. Brand new guy, dropped a clip. Brand new, you know, cut oh. the section out, made a nice pancake for him. Was showing him how to use it, and oh, right what? off onto the ground. I'm like, fired him right there on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't have a job anymore. Sorry. It's the last two hours you worked, or it's this clay bar. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. It's looking rough. You're paying for that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Punk. All right, next up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Scott Barber says, you guys picking up the clay towels, the best news ever. We're excited as well, Scott. We are too. <laughs> and then Luke says, are you picking up the clay mitt too or just the towel? Uh, just the towel just for the now. Just the towel for now. We'll see what happens in the future. And then uh, BJ, BJ <laughs> dropping bombs, $5.33 of the Super Chat thank going towards you. our Roots Chris Fund. Wow. I want to thank you, BJ, for doing this. The least I can do for all the great content you guys provide. Thank, thank, thank you very much. We're getting steaks. We are getting steaks. It's not a, it's it's not a joke happen. anymore. Yeah. It's going to happen. True J747 with a hot question. Does O&R go bad after a while when it's bottled and diluted? Every time I make a bottle, the color goes away in a week or so. Thanks, guy. True J, yes, we answered this question Just earlier. Uh, O&R, the colorant is not stable once it's diluted. Yeah. So the product is still effective. The product still works. But you're right. You lose the blue uh, little coloring. So if you want, add a drop of food coloring into it if you like no, that blue. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But it's honestly, you don't need to worry about it. It no. still it's, smells good. Yeah, it yeah. still, still smells, smells good. good. It yeah. still works. Uh, it's just you got to remember this is a very highly dilutable product, and you're diluting it at 256 to one. That is Ooh. a lot to ask for a couple, you know, yeah. bits of product to handle that. Kyle, yeah. Kyle, Kyle tackle take this. it, man. I I take my truck off road. What product will you or will help reduce pinstripes? So you're meaning scratches from brush? Yeah. I mean, ceramic coatings are a sacrificial layer. That's by far better than a wax or a sealant. Mm-hmm. But um, if you're going to take it off-roading and you know you're going to get pinstripes, you may want to coat it and maybe do some PPF. PPF's a good idea. Yeah, I would definitely do it. And PPF would be amazing. Paint, paint is thinner today than ever before. Yeah. Yep. 
and there's only so much wet sanding I can do to fix your truck. I can do it once, maybe twice. So. Yeah, so if it's like a newer vehicle, especially where the, the paint's in. Well, like it's like that, your you new truck. The, yeah, like my you new truck. Take yeah. your new truck on road. Go off roading, stuff like that. I want to PPF it so that when it does come time to sell it, because frankly, I won't keep it forever, especially in my case as a lease, but in anybody's case. Yeah. Then you are going to keep you the truck forever. You are going to want to pass it along <laughs> to die. somebody, and you're going to get the most for your money you if you sell son. it in good quality condition on that we'll paint. Like, I, I have tons of Jeep customers yeah. that I PPF your doors, PPF your A pillars, your B pillars. Yeah, everywhere where the, the, everything except fairly. for the roof. And even then, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's uh, you'll definitely scratch it up with some of the brush out there. Yep. Oh yeah. All right. We got Richard here. Hey yo, more to the food fun. Yeah. 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 Digging it. <laughs> clarity here. All right, Clarity. Hey Levi, we got Iron Buster before you as well. <laughs> Not gonna lie, you're missing out. Thanks, Clarity. Yeah, just rub Appreciate it in your face. It. It's okay. Feels I great. Get it, just you know. rubbing it in. Yep. Next I got, up. I got some too. B Daddy, like a little bit. Yeah, you got um, like a bottle. I got like a pint. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> uh, here we go. So well, Speedex is. I was just going to thing. buy <laughs> yeah. a PXC80, but I'm debating if I should upgrade to the MK3. Uh, my six-year-old ES works fine, but I'm not sure if I could be achieving faster correction with a Mark III. Dude, the Mark III is like a Cadillac. I'm not saying that you could achieve faster correction, but I will say that it's it's really the speed and ergonom- the it's ergonomics nice, honestly man. what what really sells I it i feel like it whips it's up com- faster it's comfortable it, it, it has the same motor as the mark ii but the mark three you have the the, the more adjustability the throttle and you'd be surprised on how fast that thing cranks up to speed and just how powerful it is mm-hmm. it is a very so powerful machine. are we comparing the mark three versus the px80 though apparently that's what he wants to do he wants to buy a px80 <laughs> He's wondering if he should mark. He should. He was going to buy one, but he's debating if I should upgrade to a Mark III. Yeah, he said he's still on the old ES. Version. Get them both. There you go. Okay, that's there you go. that's, that's uh, they're, the power. They're, they're different right tools. There. They do different things, and the versatility. Where see, I have a PXC80, and I have an Anno, and I use them for different things. And I put one down and pick up the other for yep. the yeah, areas yeah. without switching. Well, out. I've always said it's tools. Yeah, it's like yeah. you you can't try and do something with a screwdriver. Or as Anthony and I learned, we had I had torque spits trying to remove something at the junkyard the other day, and I stripped them out. So what was Anthony? What did Anthony say? I said go <laughs> go back and drill those things out. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> but if, did. but those are two separate tools. Yeah. 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 You know, I couldn't have gone at it with a screwdriver. I needed to do something else. And so it's the same thing with those machines. Is you're going to find different uses for them. And I understand they're, they're not they're hand. not cheap tools, but. An artist doesn't have one paintbrush, right? right? They have tons of paintbrushes. So it's just another uh, tool in your arsenal to get, get the job done efficiently. Yep. There you go. Next yeah. up. Um, Iron Buster is Anthony's stage name, says Alkaline Trio. <laughs> that is That was true for actually quite a few years. I think actually about six <laughs> years. Iron Buster and the, and the Nut Busters. Well, <laughs> well was no, that's my, most, that's my most recent stage <laughs> oh, okay. name. All right. Moving along, now. Frost Inc. here. Um, Frost Inc. says, uh, can I use O&R to clean Alcantara? Yes, you can. Yes. 256 to 1. Perfectly safe. It's actually the best thing to use. And then uh, Vedax Alcantara. says, thought I'd ask you guys since you had the experience with all of them. Uh, we have experience with a lot of them, not all of them yet. All right. Got that one next up here. Beta uh, time is money, so any faster while achieving the same result is a win-win. Correct. Oh, Luke Berge with a classic. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. No, that's how great Luke. I'm going to be. You guys all you got know to what, see though. it. Next up. All right. Life of Brian <laughs> Luke, maybe. That's one of the things the new IK spray I bottle confirm does. Confirm that it does not do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, man, I've been, I've been working overtime to afford a case of tacos. Yes, tacos. that's Luke, my boy. get that money. <laughs> get it. All right. All right. I'm Richard Wakefield, along. only if you had a few drops of Anthony's sense. <laughs> all right. What Anthony, all congrats on the new garage <laughs> solution package. Wish you well, painting white. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Wish me luck, man. It'll be a lot of work, but it'll be fun. Let's answer uh-huh. Vigor. <laughs> Vigor, are here. you guys skipping comments? Dane is. Yeah. You know what? I'm in control of the comments, and I'm trying to make sure we get to all the pertinent ones. I'm skipping See? some of the side discussions. You give a guy a little bit of power, and look what happens. Re- <laughs> you give him the remote, and look what happens. Guys, we were half an hour behind. TV. We had to catch up we if know. we had any hope of getting to You're most You're doing of great, Dane. Okay. Oh, great, Dane. Nice. So, Joe, <laughs> send all your hate-filled emails to <laughs> dane at the ragcompany.com, and he it. won't read them. <laughs> yeah. All That's right. right. <laughs> Alex Wazo. Hey, guys, after a decon with a clay towel and Ferex, do I need to rinse off or can I wash off with a big red sponge and O&R? Well, you can if you don't have a hose. But if you do have a hose, I would recommend 
rinsing the car with water first before going to do your wash with the big red sponge at O&R. Otherwise, you're going to have to wash it twice. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, boys. Yeah, we're Raul actually, says uh, yeah. we can take some blue bead maker and send you some iron buster. Ooh, that's a good trade. Nice trade. We might be able to do that. I'll mm. think about it. All right, Chris, I got my blue bead maker. Now I just need some iron buster, please. And how do you know when to replace a clay towel? Fun fact, uh, when you can't clean it anymore. And when I mean clean it, it means taking an all-purpose cleaner, scrubbing the face of it, making sure that you've got everything off of it, inspect it, and also make sure that it's not leaving material behind uh, on the surface of the car. If it started to do that, then you probably need to replace it. So those are the two things. Make sure you can't clean it anymore, and if you're, you don't feel safe with it, that kind of thing. Anthony, yep. this one's for you. And Clarity says, I hate to bug you guys about this because how generous you are, but when, uh, <laughs> but when are the GB packages being sent out? Thanks again how the opportunity, uh, thanks again for, about the opportunity, by the way. Uh, yeah, so Clarity, so Clarity is one of our grand ambassadors for Q3. Excellent, um, congrats. So big congratulations. But we are um, getting those sent out. So the final, um, uh, the final version of what's being sent to you guys is just approved. So everything's getting boxed up and hopefully sent out uh, tomorrow. So that's the kind of the goal. Thanks for being patient. Uh, Morgan uh, was gone for this last week and normally she knocks out a bunch of this stuff. So, and we've been busy with a lot of other things. So we're trying to get those out to you. And then uh, hopefully once you have them, I'll be able to start producing some pretty cool content. Yep. All right, Levi, I'm going to have you power through the All last All right, here we here. go, guys. I'm going to power through these. How do you know? Oh, uh, where are we at? Luke, ONR may not foam, but I'm still enjoying applying it with my MTM PF 22.2 from Jeff. JDM 79, I would upgrade even from a Mark II to a Mark III, just like I did, lol. Bait addict. Yeah, I mean, one or the other. If the ES is doing the job, job just fine, I'd rather get more versatility and grab a PXC 80 instead of a Mark III since I have an ES. And bait addict again, I have a 12 millimeter three inch polisher and an ES. I think it's a better option to grab a PX80 to add to the arsenal versus upgrade to the SO Mark III. There you go. And JDM makes sense. MK3 is amazing, but ES is still a very good machine. Chad Marsh, UBS or microfiber mitt on black paint with soap? Hmm. Either. Either. Yeah. Honestly. That's it. Those are great. And then Life of Brian, Nut Bust and Torque will be the next Rupes Rotary. And what oh, a way to finish nice it, guys. Name. Really, yeah. this nice. has been yeah. a fun run. Kyle, I'm glad you got to enjoy the last half hour here this with was us. awesome. It yeah. flew by, didn't it? Like, yeah, There was hardly way quick. any time to like, whoa, whiplash. <laughs> yeah. so. And uh, make sure you guys are following. If you haven't yet, follow Extreme Detailing Kyle. Yes. Uh, all one word? Yeah, at Extreme Detailing Kyle. Extreme. You- did you hear I have some bad news and some good news? Uh-oh. No. What, do you what got? is it? So good news is everyone should be buying products from PNS from the Rag Company or mm. our other distributors. Yes. The bad news is our online orders are down right now. They're going to be down for a little bit. Ooh. We've oh, no. so much volume. So go to <laughs> yeah, our distributors like the, the Rag Company and other partners <laughs> yeah, and uh, and support them while we're getting all that figured out. Yep. There we'll, you go. We'll, we'll carry that burden. Don't yeah, worry. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll carry it. I'm sure. So, guys, anything left to say before we close out here? No, but I just want to thank everybody for being on the uh, Q&A, tuning in every week like we do. Yep. And uh, thank you guys for enjoying this new format. We appreciate yeah. it. Dane, thank you for, you know, working so hard to uh, I feel like moderate okay these. Moderating, you did but a good I think job. Some of these guys volunteered to moderate, so I may include a few of them. Very nice. Time, Very nice. Away. Yeah, I like that. So. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead take and take home. us away. So, uh, guys, it's been really fun doing it this new way. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like the little break format. Maybe we'll carry that on going forward. It's a nice little, you know, it, it interrupts Very the nice. flow so that it feels fresh every time you come back. Uh, anyway, Thanks, guys, John. I want to say please thank the guys behind the uh, wall here because they've done a lot of work yep. to make Tim, this flow Nick, the and way Gabe it has. have been kicking butt. It's been awesome. So thank you to wa- you watching. And uh, thanks to the guys behind the wall for making it possible. Now, I want you to go and subscribe to the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel as well as the Rag Company FAQ channel. That's where you can get your questions answered. And if you see a video where you're like, oh, it's close to my question, but it's not quite it, write in the comments below. Write what you'd like to see answered in a video, and we'll do our best to make that happen in the near future as well. So keep the ideas coming, and we'll keep the videos going out. There you go. All right. With all that said, guys, until next time, this is us saying adios. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.